Hello, everybody. Welcome back to your favorite film photography podcast video show, The Analog Hour, with Lucy and Matt. How are you, Matt? I'm very well, Lucy Lemon. How are you? Yeah, I'm doing doing pretty well. It's a nice day outside, so I'm looking forward to getting day. getting out there after we've um we've done our chat. But I am excited to talk to you. We've got um a packed show today, as usual. Um, um, we've just got riff, all our... riffing off your intro there. This has been called the best film photography talk show in the world. And <laughs> wow, who are really? we to doubt that? <laughs> Of course not. No, we're a dy- dynamic duo, iconic duo. Iconic duo, yeah. Um, so I can't keep up with no. you know, all the good things that people are saying about us. Exactly. <laughs> um, all right, so let's crack on with our show. We do have um, listener questions as well at the end. So if you did respond, make sure you listen through to the end because we'll be answering as many as we can. Um, let's get into what we've been shooting, Matt. What have you been shooting since we last spoke? Well, actually... Lucy, I've been shooting a lot of stuff. Um, so I had a sort of a period there, I think the last analog hour where I frustratingly had a lot of rolls in cameras. I had about a dozen rolls in different cameras mm. and, and rolls I found that I kind of forgot about. But just on Tuesday, I sent down uh, eight rolls to our friends at Ikigai Film Lab. Nice one. This, this episode of the Analog Hour is sponsored, <laughs> sponsored by, by Ikigai Film Lab. <laughs> uh, no, it, I wish it was. Otherwise, I might get some free Devon scans. Yeah. But no, very, very hardworking crew down there. And yes. um, yep. so I sent down eight rolls. I sent down uh, a roll from, what did I send down? I sent down a roll from my Yashka T5. Nice. No, T, T3, sorry. T3. Yashka T3, not T5. Yep. Yashka T3. <laughs> one from my Rico R1. And I think I was telling you that the light seals had corroded in that. Yeah, I'm so sorry about that. Yeah, That's so, so it could annoying. Be a, it could be a likely Colombo mess, that roll. Mm, uh, and I had yep. a few Hills hoists on there, so I'm a bit gutted. But, oh, how annoying. You know, well, yeah. you don't, don't write the roll off right off the roll just yet. we just got to wait to see what, what's on there. Wait and um, see, yep. But I took more Cine Steel 400D at 1600. And nice. uh, so I took quite a few things. I also sent down my first roll of Agent Shadow. Ooh. And um, I shot that at ISO 1600. And I've okay. asked Lab to push it a couple of stops. So, yeah, but I've also been out there. Now, after that round was over, I was out there with my Pingu, my Pingo Aww, camera. Pingo, here we go. Not in any way licensed <laughs> to the Pingu TV show. Complete coincidence. Um, I also got back out there with my a camera that I bought earlier in the year and I kind of forgot about. It's my Contax TVS. Nice. Very, uh, very so nice. So, I, I actually put that away in my bedroom and... Um, I had a actually had a roll. I found a roll of film in there. I was like, "Oh, what's it doing in there?" I think oh, it was okay. only shot number two. So yep. I, I have been very. I shot some Polaroids as well. Let me show you some of them. Uh, here's one of my beautiful son. I took that oh, last weekend. Oh, lovely! I love the frame. That's so nice. This, this is a little one I took during the week. Uh, black the frame. Yeah. Um, dark and vignette-y there, but oh, here's one of the pooch as well. A bit of duo chrome. Oh. So I've, I've been very busy. What about you? Yeah, I've been. I've definitely not been as busy as you. You sound like you've been shooting a lot. Um, I have shot my roll of ectochrome that you kindly gave to me, so I can enter your competition, yeah. which I still need to do. Um, it's until end of end of August. That's correct, isn't it? Yeah. Look, I might even in, in true Matt loves cameras fashion. I might extend the contest maybe just yep. to mid September. I was um, hoping you'd do that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I haven't. I've actually got actually one of the rolls I sent down to Ikigai was my roll a, a roll of expired slide film mm-hmm. that i've asked to be cross-processed for this comp i shot it through my lomo lca and the first roll i did on my new my lomo lca i only got three frames there was something wrong with it uh, i don't have a lot of confidence that this one's going to turn out so I've actually i'm actually extending the competition probably to sometime in september just because okay. i think i need to shoot another roll nice yeah yeah definitely yeah i've had a few people message me and ask me about it and i don't think they've quite got it together like you know to shoot so yeah. um extending it would be good definitely but yes um Lux and I are both going to be entering so we got those shots back um mm-hmm. from Ikigai and oh they look so good I've posted them on Patreon but I haven't put them anywhere else yet because I'll be doing a video on it um nice. but yeah it looks so so good like the reds and I put it in the t4 and I used the flash on quite a few and oh, I yeah, shot yeah. some of them at night as well and they just look yeah just look so cool um Lux also shot some Cine Steel 400D. He pushed it to 3200. Wow. But didn't, a lot of the shots didn't come out, like really underexposed. But yeah. I think shooting in his like a uh, R4S, I think it is. Yeah. He's had a few issues with it, Um, unfortunately. Mm. I feel bad because it was a present, but I guess you just, these things happen with cameras, you know. Did you um, personally like, uh, do a CLA on the Leica before you gave it to him? No, I didn't. <laughs> but I did get a friend to help me out who is, um, 
like really camera savvy because I didn't want to get something that was a complete dud. But um, but yeah, mean. he's yeah yeah. But um, I think he's just got to shoot some more rolls through it and like figure out what's what's going on with it. But I thought that some of the shots were still really good. So um, I, I actually be... really enjoyed them. The ones that mm. he, I think did he I think he sent me them in on Instagram chat. Yep. Yeah, and I I really liked them. I thought they were great. I thought they had um, a vibe, you know, yeah, even though sure. they are like a bit, you know, like underexposed or whatever. Like I think they because I've cool. I've also shot Cine Steel four hundred D at ISO thirty two hundred, and I was I was chatting. I don't know if it was you or Lux or both of you. I was chatting about this, but I was disappointed with my role, um, and I think it's because. Mm. I think it's because this, I think like, you know, obviously when you rate a film at 3,200, but it's actually only a 400 speed film, Yeah. you know, you, you, the shutter speeds are, are way faster. You're letting a tiny bit of light on that film. And of course, when it's being pushed three stops in the development, it, you know, the development pushing three stops makes, makes up for a bit of that. But yeah. It's not, it doesn't add exposure. So if yeah. you're not letting that much light on the film in, under, in some circumstances, I think there's, I think is perhaps not enough light on the film in the first place for it to look any good. Yeah. So about half of my role, I think was pretty much trash. The other half I could probably do a video on, but mm-hmm. I was a bit embarrassed about like, the, I thought they'd be better than they were. So I haven't done a video on it yet. Yeah. I think that's good though, to do a video on roles that True. don't come out. Like I used to think that, especially when I first started, cause I was like, Oh, I don't want anyone to say anything bad about my photography. Um, even though they will anyway, even if it, even if it looks good sometimes, but, um, I think it's good to show like the duds or like, so people know if they go to shoot it at 3,200, like, you know, like we kind of had your role to go off. Um, and you know, but yeah, same kind of thing, like half of it, half of it was good. Half of it wasn't, but the shots that look good, I think, um, like they still, you know, came out, still looked good. So, Mm. um, yes. And I also shot the, uh, pen that you lent me. We were talking about that in the last episode. Um, oh, oh my God. So in love with half frame, like just, yeah. Yeah, she is. Beautiful. A beautiful 41.4 lens. Yeah. just feel the bokeh. <laughs> feel that bokeh. Um, yeah, I had a great time using it. Like I, it was like really easy to use, really fun. And like I didn't struggle to get through the 72 shots at all. Did you put a scratch on the bottom of it. What? No, I was very careful, that was Matthew. Not, I'm going to have to charge you a fee for oh, this. A pen F fee is going to be it's, a it's, lot. It's not mint plus 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 anymore. It's mint <laughs> minus now. Lucy Lemon's had her grubby hands on it. But maybe it, it, it's probably gone up in value, though, because I've used it, Matt. You know, oh, yeah, it's true. Got the, you, know, yeah. you didn't sign the back of it, though. <laughs> um, yeah, so thank you so much for lending me um, that. I now am an owner of what? an all, yes, of an all black one. But I can't have it until my birthday Just trying to in October. Me this, so, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was actually my recommendation. I think I, did I put the idea of the black one in Lux's head? I think you did. Yeah. So thank you. <laughs> I just I just said if you got if I was going to buy another one, I'd buy a black one. And I've actually thought about buying a black one before as well. But I kind of thought sometimes I have I, like I, I think about buying another another Natura. I really want a blue Natura. Mm. But I think well, what's the point? I've already got a black one. They're yeah. the same camera. Why would you buy? There are a lot of money. Yep. You, these things do go through my mind. Yeah, you think, oh, that'd be nice to have that one. I do that, but with like bags or shoes or sunglasses. I've already got a pair, but it'd be nice to have them in another colour. Slightly less expensive than buying film cameras, so yeah, it's probably better. Um, but yeah, I like loved my half frame shots. I'm not sharing them yet because I'll probably wait for a video. I'm working on a video kind of answering all my questions that I had about half frame. Cool. Um, so Ikigai have helped me out with like, you know, resolution and you know, yep. just letting me know how they scan it and all that kind of stuff because I was just oh, awesome. interested to know. Yeah. So, and then I've kind of crowdsourced a bit of other information and I've done like a big mind map. So, I'm going to be like answering all the questions on there for my so, video. Um, one very quick question. I, I, you might not want to give a spoiler, but is it half the size of one of their full frame scans or is it the same size? Um, I can't remember. I'll have to check in the email because there was a lot of information in there. Really done your homework. Well done. <laughs> Work in progress. You know, I'm not Actually, good with you know numbers what? as well. I saw the I saw the answer to it, and I was like, okay, I'll have to, um, you know, sit down and go through the rest of that email. But I can't, um, I can't remember if I've. I don't think I've actually sent them a half frame roll yet. I actually um, stopped sending my stuff to another lab over a half frame roll, and I think that was mm, the last roll of half frame I shot. That you shot, yeah. Mm. Mm. So I don't well, think I've, I've sent them a half frame roll. It's so good, like so good for like storytelling, like. Mm. You know, more so than just like, you know, one oh, image because sure. you've got the two next to each other. So it's, I'm mm. really getting like, you know, I feel like I'm getting so much more out of my shots because I'm like, oh, I could get 
yeah. like that close up shot and then that far away shot and have Absolutely. them on the like diptych and then it's like creating this like that's, more story. That's what people say. People say, oh, 72 shots. I'd never get through 72 shots. But you actually find it, it is conducive to taking more shots because you're like, I'll take this post box, the red or the post box against the blue sky. Actually, there's a nice, you know, old uh, logo of, of the Queen's logo or something. That's like an old one from the past. I'll, I'll take a close up of that. Yeah. And then I'll take it, the post box against the green grass. And so you take a whole lot of shots. Like if you're only, you know, you're doing medium format, you might only take one shot. If you're taking, you know, a normal full frame, you might only take the one shot as well. But yeah. with half frame, you end up taking complementary shots or, or mm. multiple shots of the same thing just because, you, you can you can you know? yeah yeah and you're not like using another oh now i'm shooting another roll of film it's like it's on the same roll so yeah i i'm i definitely recommend it but i'll save the rest of it for the video i used ektar as well and i think that was like a good choice it was really yeah. bright and sunny and yeah it just looked really good super sharp and mm. um yeah i'm really really excited about it so i have to wait till october to use my half frame camera when we go to noosa um Nursa. yes we go to noosa um but yeah that's pretty much what i've been shooting so not not a whole lot but um yeah you did um interesting psychological thing happened during the week you were talking about color plus and then yes. you said that um you managed to get your hands on a brick and then sour creamus or sour yes. cream us sour i like cream to say sour creamus yeah. rolls off the tongue a bit better sour creamus bought a brick from ikigai in melbourne and then people, I think um, Chris from Analog Talk was after some on mm, Twitter. Yeah, you said, and yeah. People said it was out of stock everywhere. Yeah. The funny thing happened, like, I was like, oh my God, there's a there's a shortage of Color Plus. I don't even like Color Plus. I actually, in, in the famously, in the last episode of Analog Hour, I, I, uh, I, I, yes. I, I dumped on Color Plus. <laughs> you did. <laughs> <laughs> but then, but when, then when I find out there's a shortage, just like, my oh, wife was in the city that day, and I'm like, Oh, can you just like before you go to Central Station? Can you just go to Ted's Camera House? They've got color. I've got four poly, four rolls of color plus in stock for ten dollars. Can you? So I had to give her instructions at the center. A picture of the box. Box. The make price, sure, make right. sure it's thirty six exposure. Yeah. I, I do twenty four, but yeah. So we did all that, and I actually have. Um, I think they're up here. here they are. Here's three of them. I've actually got some color plus. Nice. And it's only because there's a shortage. I want some. Then you want some. It's like that scarcity. But I, yeah, like, but I I feel like I I don't I don't really hate any film to be honest, but I feel like I. I feel like I should give it another go because people I think love you it. Should. Cool. Yeah. Well, I was going to say, what's your beef with Color Plus? Like, what, what's, what, what is it that you don't like? Uh, I just think if you're going to shoot a, a saturated color film like a cheaper one, you should go for Kodak Gold 200 or Pro Image mm. 100. I think mm. they're really good films. Color. Yep. I don't have a beef with Color Plus per se. In fact, I think I've shot it before. I got it in my mind. I didn't like it. But I think I actually, when I look back at the photos, I was like, oh, I actually really like these photos. Yeah. Um, but I don't know. I just think it's. It's a bit grainier, I think, it's, and I yeah. I it sometimes can be a little bit like f not like forgettable, but a bit kind of just unforgettable. That's <laughs> what color plus is. <laughs> so much singing on the analog. You, pro out. you probably don't even know what. Uh, I don't think I know that, that song. No, unforgettable by is it uh, Nat King Cole? I don't know who that is. Oh my gosh! Our American friends would be cancelling oh, you. Oh really? Nat King Cole was a very, very famous singer. Well, quickly, I'm going to slide in here with something really quickly. So slide I into my DM. <laughs> <laughs> so I did a podcast interview with this cinematographer, director, photographer. He was on Negative Positives um, a couple of episodes ago. His name is Jonathan yeah. Ben Simon or Ben oh, yeah, yeah. Ben Summit. I don't know. Yeah, really interesting interview. And I was like, I want to interview you. So we did like our top five movies to inspire your photography. It'll be out tomorrow, but maybe it's already out now because who knows when this Analog Hour episode will go out. Um, anyway, so he picked five films and his last film he picked like for me, I think, because I'm Australian. And he was like, so the last movie I'm picking hey, is... Just, just wait, wait, wait. Please tell me it wasn't that absolute stinker of a movie, Australia, with Hugh Jackman and Nicole Kidman. No. Worst no. movie. I haven't seen have that. Ever have the word Australia. Oh, it's, it's horrible. It's <laughs> I haven't terrible seen it, but movie. I wouldn't want to see it. I, hey, I, look, I... Nicole Kidman, I respect Nicole Kidman. She's I don't good think she's in some things. Yeah, she hasn't made a good film since um, you know BMX Bandits. I don't think in nineteen eighty six. Bandits. Lux I, talks not... about that movie all the time as well. He used to, BMX Bandits. He used to watch no. it when he was a kid, <laughs> yeah. like over and over again. Yeah, she had big frizzy curly hair then. No, what's the one with Sam Neill on the boat with the crazy guys trying to Dead Calm? Have you seen Dead Calm? No, I haven't seen it's that. It's an early Aussie film with Nicole okay. Kidman speaking in Aussie. That that was her last good film. <laughs> All the, all the rest of the films. Good in, um, really I, good in Eyes Wide Shut, the Stanley um, I Kubrick seen that one. movie I seen with it. Tom Cruise. Yeah, she was really I, good in that. I thought I but. really harbor a grudge against her for doing Bewitched. 
Oh like, yes, she did Bewitched. I'm sorry, yeah, she was not Samantha from Bewitched. Yeah, no, she definitely wasn't cutting Terrible. the mustard in that either. Cutting the the broomstick. The, yeah. The bro- <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so the movie was. He said, um, "It's it's called the Dish." Have yeah, yeah, yeah. I've yeah. never seen the Dish. Yes. I've never heard of it, and he yeah. was really disappointed. Like the same way you said, "Oh, the uh, our American listeners will be disappointed yeah. with you." So I'm just disappointing people just worldwide, just left, right, and center. Yeah. He, I feel like my or my like uh, just a disappointment. Just in, yeah, just in general. Um, so I was like, oh, I feel really embarrassed because this guy's like, oh, you know, I'm going to pick this movie and we're really going to connect. And I was like, I've and never heard over. of it, never seen it, so it just fell flat. And um, yeah. And then I told Lux when I came off the call, and he was like, oh my god, how have you not seen that or the heard dish. of it? So so it's basically Australia played a role in the Apollo, the, the moon landing, right? The, the the first moon landing. We have satellite dishes here in Australia. We have one in parks. I think the one, I think the dish is about the one in parks. Okay. And parks in New South Wales. It's called Parks, uh, the, the town, it parks in New, New South, South Wales. Wales. Yeah, yeah. And the, the, that satellite dish played a big role in the moon landing because they, I think, because America is the other side of the world to Australia, they needed full coverage of when the world okay. was going around. I'm not yep. very good at this science, this, explaining You're some of this me, science Matt. stuff. You're better than me, Better than me. They needed full coverage of what the guys on the moon were doing, right? Yeah. You know, they couldn't just be picking away at that cheese and eating it off the, the face <laughs> of the, the moon, right? <laughs> so they needed the observatory and the satellite dish in parks. And, mm-hmm. and yeah, so it's, it's, I actually watched it probably about a year ago because I did a, I actually worked as a contractor for CSIRO who are Australia's science agency Okay, and yes, people would yeah. talk about this because it was about, yeah, their work. So mm-hmm. there you go. Oh, well, mm. you're a lot more knowledgeable. You should have interviewed him, not me. Well, the funny thing, <laughs> well, I'm not sure about that, but the funny thing was we, I couldn't find it on a streaming service. And so my dad, I think my dad, I was talking to my dad about it and said, have you seen this film? I can't get it. You, don't suppose you got it on your pile of DVDs. My dad actually went online and found it for about 10 bucks and ordered it and sent it to my house. Nice. So, yeah. Okay. Well, there we go. Yeah. So um, that episode, that podcast episode will be out soon. So everybody can listen to the end to laugh at me not knowing that movie. But the other movies we picked were all um, – ones I'm definitely a fan of um, and it was an awesome chat to it was kind of like the Mike Gutterman one where we you know we just talked about music and then this one we just talked about movies so I was in heaven um, but That's back to song. the uh, I'm in heaven anyway hey I'm, I'm surprised you didn't choose Mad Max <laughs> me no him uh, or him Mad yeah. Max is the one film that a lot of a lot um, of people Americans yeah. in particular yeah, yeah. I That's mean, it was it was basically yeah, it was a very a seminal film, wasn't mm. it? That that kind of genre of utopian, dystopian yep. future of a bunch of weirdos hooning yep. around in. It's very in iconic, mm. just like us. We, yep. We're an iconic duo, <laughs> iconic Australian duo. Just like um, what's his name? Mel Gibson and uh, I don't know. I don't know who who do you pair him with? I don't know. <laughs> Not Jewish people after what he said, I don't think. No, def- definitely <laughs> not. Definitely not. Um, so back to Naughty uh, Color Color Plus. So yeah, He's I got a disappointment. A, he is a disappointment. Just like Color Plus. He was, was born in America. He, by the way, he wasn't born in Australia. Can we can we, can we offload him? Yeah, that's like a lot. Well, that's like Nicole Kidman. Nicole Kidman, yeah. He was born in yeah. Hawaii. We don't and wanna. there's another one too. Russell Crowe. He was born well, in New yeah, Zealand. He's, yeah, he's born in New Zealand, yeah. You know, there's heaps of them. Um there's another one. Um Kate. What's the Australian one? Kate I love how you say there's, of them. there's another one. There's another person in Australia that wasn't born in Australia because it's funny that we're laughing because probably at least 30% of Australians were not born in Australia. Born in Australia. I know. Uh, it's just so, funny because yeah. we're so like, oh, our, you know, our Russell Crowe or our, and then it's like, well, well yeah. technically, like not really, but, you know. Yeah, well, it, the kind of thing that is, there was a, there's a movie, uh, you know, Farlap, the horse Farlap. I do know that. Yep, yeah. that's about all I know. <laughs> the most the famous race the horse, horse in Australian that's history. It. Yeah. Yep. So there was a movie about that years ago, and they said, oh, "What if Farlat wins?" And they said, "Well, if I, I think Farlat went to the Kentucky Derby, right?" And they said, "What if Farlat wins?" Put Aussie horse wins, and they said, "What if he doesn't win?" Put Kiwi horse fails. <laughs> Farlat was actually yeah. born in New Zealand, but then came over to Australia. Ah, oh, okay. Yeah. And there okay. is actually a thing about that. I think when Farlat went to America, they reckon he got drugged. And they drugged really? him because they didn't want him to win. Yeah, yeah probably. What probably one of Mike Gutterman's ancestors didn't want him to win the, oh, the Kentucky Derby. The Kentucky Derby. <laughs> and God. they they drugged old poor old Fall Fall Out. Then he died. He died. And but he, isn't his heart in the museum in Melbourne? I have no idea. God, this conversation. This conversation to... has gone so far from analog photography. Yeah. I don't know. I'm really mm. bad with any kind of like 
sort of broad knowledge. Like when I go to trivia, like I can never answer any questions. I have no geography, no science, no math, no sport, no politics. You just got three chords in the truth. I've just, yes. Yeah. And just like weird, like, you know, this. But if someone says who the Smashing Pumpkins final album was, you yeah, I actually can't think of that now, but oh. but the, I only like the first three. So Such see, just niche down knowledge of just early Smashing Pumpkins <laughs> records. Um, anyway, let's get back on track. So, yes, please. Um, moving on to what we bought, I was I bought a brick of Color Plus. I got it at Van Bar Imaging for any of our Australian or American listeners. Jeez, I support you're anywhere. Up, you're picking um, up the Melbourne and bloody shops these days, aren't you? Yeah, well, that's where all the like labs and the shops and stuff are. So, um, but yeah, I got it from there, and it was yeah, not not too bad. I'm glad to have it because it's my kind of like testing cameras kind of you know roles. Um, mm. And then I have bought a new Digicam, or rather, Lux what? bought a new Digicam. Yep. Um, we got the it's the Sony Cybershot. It's all of four point one megapixels. I don't know if you can see that. Sweet. There. It's not in very good condition. Like it's pretty scratched up, but I mean that doesn't really matter. We don't have a memory stick for it, so we haven't tried it yet. But um, yep. but I'm excited to um to try it. I think. What kind of memory stick does it take? I'm not sure, actually. I don't know. I'll have to ask. Some what. some digicams take some weird, weird mm. ones. Eh? Mm. Yeah, people have been messaging me saying like, "Well, oh, I can't find this for this or whatever." But um, but yeah, watching one month two cameras channel is just like you just want to buy all the digicams like mm. and just switch to vintage digital watching her channel. Yep. So, um, and then I got the pen FT obviously, but I can't open it yet. Um, and then also I got this, people might've seen on Instagram and I was hoping you could maybe tell me a little bit about it. I got this, uh, Minolta AFC nice. from Cameron of Selling Cameras. He sent me this to try out. So I will be doing a photo walk hopefully tomorrow with it. Um, I gotta say, I gotta say, I was listening to you the other day, you both on your podcast. Mm. That's a great name for someone who, who has a camera shop. Cameron selling Cam. cameras. Cameron. I know. It's all like Cameron. Did you camera, Cam. mm. Cameron? I know. It was like I was trying to come up with a title for it and it was yeah. getting a bit kind of clunky. Yeah. Um, but yeah, great well, you name. Should, you should ask uh, Jeff Greenstein. He's always doing like little puns oh, okay. in the episode titles. All right. I'll uh, outsource yeah. my titling to him. Um, I'm sure, I'm sure you know, he'd love to help. You know. Maybe we could talk about um, depth of field preview afterwards as well, <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> or lenses, Absolutely. or Absolutely. so. Jeff, <laughs> I did. I did message you during the week. Jeff read out my letter, and I, I referenced a couple of those things. That was very funny. Um, yeah. yeah, I enjoyed that. Um, but yeah, do you know much? I did watch an old camera guy video this morning about this camera, um, and his shots looked really good. But um, yeah, it's got like the flash that you attach to the side, like similar to like the XA has that right, where you put the flash on the side. Um, but yeah, other than that, I don't really know a whole lot about it, but it's a very cool camera. Like, um, well, happy birthday to, for yesterday to the old, he's the even older camera oh, guy now. Really? I didn't know yeah. that. Oh, damn, he's an I'll August have to baby him. as well, like me. Yeah. Um, so no, I've never used that one, but yeah, a, a, a slew of those cameras seem to come out with a little flash on the side. I mean, it's a bit like, um, it's also a bit like the, the Voigtlander one that I've got, which is like a Minox one that you, you can also put like the flash on the side of that one. So, um, yeah. Yeah, I, I haven't used that one. Okay. No, I've got so many cameras. I just need to... I yeah, you've got too no. many cameras. <sighs> Guy with too I've many cameras. I've got to get rid of them. Yeah. Um, okay, well, I'll um, I'll obviously be doing a video on it, so I'll be sharing um, what I what I think of of that one, but I'm excited to use it. And I also have a, new, a um, Zuiko lens as well to try out on my... What, what kind of lens was it? OM10. I think it's a 1.4. 1, 1. No, the other name. Zuiko's... Z Z is that how I say it? I don't know. I just like hearing you say it because you say it like you're semi-confident, but there's always. But then I'm like, oh no, was that wrong? Because I'm like, oh, like when you don't know someone's name and you kind of muffle it because you're like, oh, I don't really know if that's your name. Hi, Marcia. Hi. I think that's like a Seinfeld episode, maybe. It sounds very oh, Seinfeld. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but yeah, that's it. Pretty much it. That's what I've bought. What have you bought, Matt? Um, I don't know. Uh, well, I bought, I bought the uh, the bought a whole lot of, of uh, color plus, uh, and, uh, you and know, for, for scarcity, yeah, and a whole lot of Polaroid. Which I, <laughs> I did a live stream, as you know, last yes. um, week. We can did a live stream. I watched your live stream yesterday. Actually, I was supposed to tell you um, while I was uh, cooking in the kitchen yesterday, yep. and you did so well, like so so oh, well. I think you. for your first live stream, you did really well. I've been procrastinating because I'm scared to do one, so I admire you for yeah jumping on well the, the only it, it, there's two scary things about doing the live stream the first one is i'd never done one before on youtube so i'm pressing all the buttons and i'm thinking like with zoom uh and skype you can actually test your voice and your microphone yeah and 
I have, there's an internal mic in my Mac and there's this one here people can't see. Um, but basically I was thinking, well, I don't want it to be the internal mic. You know, can I, can I make sure this mic's working? This, this podcasting mic and you have, you have you press the button and you can't tell. So I'm talking away and I'm thinking, geez, I hope people can hear me. And the yeah. other thing is that when you first go live, like it says, you have zero watching. Oh. Nobody is watching you. <laughs> Nobody <YouTube>. cares. <laughs> Why don't you just quit now? And it's, you know, it's basically all these things. <laughs> But now after about 15 seconds, uh, Matthew Joy, Matthew Joseph, Matthew Joseph <laughs> joined, <laughs> Joseph, Matthew Joseph, he joined, I think he's from New Jersey, uh, Matthew Joseph, he joined, <laughs> he joined, <laughs> Lucy is in stitches, <laughs> she's fallen off her chair, Lucy has fallen off her chair, she's fallen off her crocheted rug. Somebody save the crocheted rug. Oh, God. Okay, I need to compose myself. Sorry, it's really funny. It's really funny. <laughs> so Matthew Joseph joined. It's actually hard to say. It and, is. Um, and a few other people joined, which is lovely. Uh, the, old camera, the old camera guy, the old camera guy joined, Dave Mahali. Um, our friend Casey joined from one of the Carolinas. Is it north or south? I can't remember. A few okay. other people. Cool. It was really lovely to chat to people. So I had about, I think I had a, I had eight people on there at, at the most. That's good. That, that, was, so, that was good. I think that's yeah. pretty good. It's, mm. You don't really want... So I had a little chat with Hashem the other day because he was helping me with my questions I had about live stream because I've always got so many questions. Um, and yeah, so if you if you need any help, definitely um, hit up Hashem. Mm. But he said like you don't really want a lot of people when you first start doing it. Yeah, yeah. Like, you don't want like 100 people on there because you'll be like, oh, my God, and then they'll be commenting. Like, you kind of just want like eight people. Like that's kind of manageable. Yeah, well, part of, the, uh, part of the inspiration was – on my phone, um, I get these notifications that Japan Camera Hunter, he goes live every Thursday lunchtime. Yep, yep. And I've been watching his. Mm. Uh, I only go for about 10 minutes, but I've been watching his and uh, really enjoy it. And I, I'll just uh, put in little questions and stuff. Yep. Um, like sometimes for, I asked him, a, actually, the only question I, I asked him he didn't answer, I was a bit upset, was he said, ask me anything like about life or anything. And I said, do you okay. like, being an English gentleman, do you like cricket? And he never replied to that. Oh, what? I know. He'd be all over that. I know. Well, I don't, I don't, I'm not sure he likes cricket because he lives Maybe in Japan. Yeah. But, um, no, it was really interesting. I asked him about a few different cameras. Yep. Um, but it's a bit depressing when you ask him about point and shoots because he basically says, don't buy them, they're ticking time bombs. Yeah, but that's just his, like, opinion, you know. It like, is. We talked about is. this, I think, the last episode of, like, the we had that question from um, Dave and it was like, you know. Met Dave. <clears throat> yeah, Dave. Um, and, you know, it's like it depends. Yeah. It, it comes up. down to more, like, how much you like them. Like, if yeah, you get like there, them. shoot them, have gonna... fun. But, yeah. but what I guess what you're looking for when you ask somebody like that, you're you're looking for it's that confirmation bias thing. You want them to say yes, you should go buy it, and you go, I'm going to go buy it like, because oh, they said I should buy it. Yeah, Japan Camera Hunter said it was a good idea, so you know, yeah, yeah, definitely. But um, cool. I'll have to check out his uh, lives. I didn't know he did that, and he's a wealth of knowledge to yes. say for the least. So yeah. that's that's good. I asked um, him, what's, what's your favorite toy camera? And um, he said uh, that he, there's a one called the Shinon Bellamy, um, oh. and, he, and he said that. But in a previous live stream, I, I, I knew that he had it because he was on um, who's that uh, that guy, the German guy, Analog something. Nico. I really like his oh, um, Analog. Oh, I can't remember his name, but he's a YouTuber. No. I really like his. Video. He's quite close cropped to the screen, but I like his okay. videos. And he interviewed Bellamy, and Bellamy showed this Be Bellamy. Japan camera hunter showed his Bellamy camera. Yep. And so in one of Bellamy's live streams, I put, show us your Bellamy, Bellamy. <laughs> nice one, Matt. <laughs> but but uh, yeah, he, he said, you're looking at him. You're looking at him. So. <laughs> nice one, dad. Um, so <laughs> it's what I do. It's a gift. <laughs> um, and hey, it's either that or go on a Mel Gibson style rant. So yeah, you know, yeah, I'll, yeah. I'll stick to the dad jokes. Go with the dad jokes. Yep. Yeah. Um, so you bought a whole bunch of Polaroid film as well, and you got that cool Polaroid shirt, which is uh, which is awesome. Um, anything else that you have purchased, Matt? I, I, I would don't think so. I think I, you would have maxed mm. out the cards with your Polaroid. Um, yeah, well, there. part of that was birthday present. Um, I don't think I don't think I bought anything else. No, I'm still sitting on that money for the camera. Like I bought, you know, I'm thinking about buying a, another either a Nikon 35 Ti, mm, yes, which Bellamy, yeah. uh, Japan Camera Hunter. So he said it's a beautiful looking camera the other day. Some, someone else asked him about it, and he said it's a beautiful looking camera. He said it's a little. Bit, he said it's a bit slow. I thought it was. I thought it was quite. Yeah, fast I thought it would have been shoot. fast. Yeah. Mm. But he said it's a little bit slow. So, um, but I'm thinking about the Nikon 35 Ti. I'm mm. still thinking about that sexy little G Rico GR1V. Oh yes. Yep. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I'm just. I would moment. go the Nikon, but like you know. I, yeah. 
like I've I've always wanted that camera. Yeah. Like that's like definitely on my list of you know. The problem is the the twenty eight is actually better looking. It's all black and it looks really nice. The twenty eight. The, the 35 is more of a champagne color. Yeah. Um, yep. Anyway, I'll, I'll see what happens. But then again, like I've got, you know, like I discover like in a box in my room, I discover a contact TVS. I mean, yeah, it's just, like, just oh, got that yeah. lying around. I yeah. forgot to have that. I haven't, if I don't know, <laughs> shot two rolls through it, I better, I better either use it and sell it or sell do something it, yeah. with it. You know? Yeah. Well, one in, one out rule. It's my rule from my, from my video that I sometimes you know, ab- abide by my one in one out. Like you buy a camera, you got to sell a camera, which admittedly we're not all doing. Uh, <laughs> so, okay. This all right, is in well, and out rule. I think, <laughs> so I think maybe this would be a good time to bring up the um, skipping the content quickly talking Gosh. about, do you feel you were, we were talking the other day and you were saying like, you know, do you feel guilty about mm. buying things. Yeah, I think yeah. this was spurred on by your large Polaroid order. Um, and then obviously the amount of cameras you have. So yeah, how do you do a little bit of do a quick therapy session of how, how yeah, do you do you feel guilty? What's your cycle like? Because it doesn't seem to be stopping you, Matt. Well that <laughs> this conversation will stop me, make me feel even worse. <laughs> no, it's just a conversation around like I only buy so I said this in my live stream, I buy from Polaroid shop in the Netherlands once a year. The reason I buy from them is because it comes straight from the factory. It hasn't been sitting in a warehouse for six weeks, six months. Yep. So you're getting the freshest film from the factory. Yep. You get stuff from them that you can't get like, the, well, you can get elsewhere, but the beautiful albums I've got, the nice t-shirt, even though t shirts has been overpriced anyway. Um, but also like you save money, like the, uh, I think I made a note of it somewhere from my live stream, but I think a pack of film straight from them delivered, including shipping is around 17 us dollars a pack. Right. And I've, I've averaged it out. So obviously some film like the SX 70 and the 600 is more expensive and the duochrome is more expensive than the eye type, yeah. but I averaged it all out. I paid about $17 us a pack. Whereas if I buy the same film in, Ast- in Australia, it's like $27. Yeah, a pack that was, that's pretty, it's, really it's good. It's almost $40 a pack for one pack here in Australia. Yeah. Australian dollars. Yeah. So you're saving money, you get the exclusive stuff, but I only do it once a year because it's, you got to um, a lot it's 50 of... euros shipping. See? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yep. You know, 50 US dollars roughly. Mm-hmm. So you got to make that shipping count. You can't just buy one pack of film. Yep. So, sorry, I said to clear my throat off camera. Got a little co- Kermit in yeah, there. A little, little Kermit in there. Right. So, um, what's the whole point of this conversation? The point of the conversation is I only buy from them once a year. And then I, my last order was 13 months ago. Okay. So, that's, okay. that's you know, it's, so you it's a fair do. distance between yeah. drinks on, on the Polaroid front. But, yeah. yeah, when I did order it, I did feel guilty. I felt like, mm. you know, because every night on the TV news, you see stuff about people sleeping in their cars and the economy going down. And, of course, our interest rates are going up and our yeah. mortgage repayments are going up yeah. and yeah. food's going up and lettuce is like well they're not twelve dollars but they're six dollars and you're bombarded all the time by all these messages and there's something Mm. inside you going should i've just bought eight hundred dollars with polaroid film and of course just to short circuit the conversation i guess the answer is well yes if you have the money and it brings you joy and happiness in what is otherwise a mundane and boring existence yeah go for it i think i i agree with you and i think like i mean I, i i feel you with especially like everything you see in the news and um, you know, you hear about other people's situations and that can, you know, make you feel really guilty on top of like the guilt you're already feeling. But then you talk to, if you talk to anybody, they'll have like their mm. thing that they spend money on, you know, like this is like our thing. Mm, yeah, um, everybody's yeah. got, you know, like it, whether it's a, a hobby or it's just something that's really important to them. Like, yeah. like I, like example, like I have like a girlfriend and she, you know, like she gets, she goes and gets her hair done. Like she gets her nails done. Like she gets her eyelashes done. She gets, and I, I think, oh, wow, that's, that would cost a lot of money. It's probably the same amount of money I'm spending on like film and getting them dev and scanned and all the other yeah, stuff, you know what right. I mean? But yeah. that's what makes me happy. And that's what's important to me. And like you say, brings me joy. And then for her, that's, that's her thing. Like, you know, that's yeah. what she does. Like she gets a lot out of that. It's important to her. So whatever that is for whoever it is, like, you know, um, as long as it's not, hurting anyone or you know like it's not like we're gambling or you know like there's a lot of worse things you could be doing like i think these are things that enrich your life like culturally and yes artistically which i value very highly like other people you know maybe they don't but i think it's important and also i used to be i used to be more 
like since meeting Lux, I've definitely, we've, we've upped our cameras for sure. And I've like, you know, I'm mm. shooting a lot more than I ever have before, which is great, I think. And especially because I used to kind of look for happiness, maybe in like a clothes store or a, you know, like something like that. Like I still like doing that, but I do it a lot less than I used to. And that stuff normally ends up getting like worn once and sitting there and, you know what I mean? Whereas like a camera kind of feels more like an investment and then I can use mm. it and it like gets me outdoors and gets me creative. And like, there's a lot more worth in that than. So you saying yeah. that happiness is not a crocheted beanie. <laughs> no, it's not. I was going to put the beanie on. Where is you. the beanie? Um, Is it? It's up there. It's just out of frame today, I think. I'm sitting slightly different than normal. But um, I was going to put it on for you, but then the headphones, it's a bit like... You just don't want to mess up your hair. A lot of, head, a lot of headgear to have on. Yeah, yeah. true. No, I, I agree. Like, I, I have felt, you know, felt guilty in the past about buying cameras. But then again, I don't drink, like, I don't drink very much. Yep, yep. I don't go to the pub. I don't yep. go to nightclubs. I very rarely go to concerts. I don't mm. go to the footy or yep. even the cricket. I prefer to watch. I love cricket. It's my favorite sport, but I prefer to watch it on watch it the TV mm. uh, because you see all the replays and stuff and you can, you can replay it and you see if it's LBW or not. Anyway. Um, so I, I don't go out. I don't go out and spend a lot of money. You know what I mean? So if we do go out for the day, we might, all of us might spend 50 bucks between all of us on bloody Betty's burgers or something like that. Right. So I don't spend a lot of money on other things. The main thing that I spend money on is, is film is cameras and i guess you know if you go below a thousand dollars we've got we, have, we do have a terrible australians are one of the biggest gamblers i think we're the biggest gambling nation it's on earth I terrible think. Yeah, it's very encouraged yeah. as well it makes me laugh when they say gamble Absolutely. responsibly it would be like say do heroin responsibly yeah, that's right like thanks for that and un unfortunately we have these things called i guess americans would call them slot machines or the british would call them fruit, fruit machines. machines yeah uh, but uh, in england you can only like put 2p or something in them ridiculous you can't actually put much money in england mm, can you but yeah they're more like toy things toy whereas things, yeah. in australia you can they're called poker machines um unfortunately probably getting some social commentary in here loose lumen yeah. unfortunately a lot of these poker machines are actually in, in lower so so socioeconomic Socio neighborhoods yeah and they just fleece millions of dollars of people a year mm -hmm. who can't you can't win like it's math <laughs> that's mathematics you cannot win from yep. the poker machine you can win but then you'll lose the next day mm -hmm. and, and so i guess when you think about it you know, i'm not doing drugs i'm not doing i'm not going to strip joints or anything like that i i, I just put on your mouth yeah just got heaps of cameras <laughs> i'm a modern man just me and my cameras we're just so, making uh, ourselves seem really good but we're the, only, like... the only thing i'm stripping down is my pen ft when i give it a cla <laughs> um, so, uh, so so um yeah um actually i can't i can't, wouldn't know where to start with the cla um so yeah like the, the other thing of course is that a lot of these cameras when they don't break they're actually they are investments you know um, I mean, you know, cameras might be worth something today. They might go up in value. They might go down. I guess the trick with everything in life is knowing when to, mm. when to flip it, when to yep. keep it, when to, yep. you know, um, try and sell it before it breaks. I don't know, but, um, yeah. 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 No, I think, I think it's, it's, it's fine. I think we're doing what we're doing is fine. Like you say, like it could be, it could be a lot worse and I don't think that we should feel too guilty about it. Um, yeah. but I well, think that, that, sorry, you go. There you go. I was just going to say like more on the kind of um, maybe sitting on a purchase, like before you buy something, kind of thinking yeah. about it a little bit like you're saying with the Nikon 35 Ti and, you know, it's like you're still kind of umming and ahhing. So like figuring out, okay, taking stock of what you've got, am I shooting with this or am I just kind of consuming yeah. like am I just like I just want to acquire all these things and then, you know. Like I don't think for me – I don't think it's acquiring because I'm not – I'll say it, I've, I've said it before. I'm not a camera collector. I don't have to have – you know, like the Nikon FM3A and the F3, I don't even know what the model names are, but I don't have to yeah. have all the models and I don't, yep. you know what I mean? I, I like, I do have multiples of some cameras because I, I like shooting with them, but that's yep. a, a shooting thing more than a collecting mm -hmm. thing. But I'm, I, I guess the only reason that's holding me back off the next purchase is well, what if I think of something else that I want better? I, I have thought about, I really love my Contax G1. I really love the feel of it. I have thought about instead of buying the Nikon 35Ti, just buying a G2. The problem is they're just so – they have gone up so much mm. in value, like everything else. Yeah. And yep. that that is the problem. Like I, I guess I could scrape together the money for a G2, but mm. do I want do – I, then, and then am I yeah. overcapitalizing in something, you know? Yeah, definitely. And then also it's kind of like the housing thing at the moment, you know, when people are always saying, oh, it's going to crash, it's going to crash, so wait it out, and, and then it doesn't, and you're like, oh, they just keep going up. How much more can they go up kind of thing? 
I've had a few people message me lately on Instagram saying that they think that um, camera prices will come down because of how difficult it is to get film and because of how expensive film is. So then yeah, people I've... won't be buying the film cameras and so then the film cameras will come down in price. Maybe, I don't know, you know. I've, I have thought that. I think what that, I think that what's happened is I know that when I've put up cameras, uh, point and shoots that I'm selling, I've – from last, from a year ago, I've seen a definite decrease. I used to get, I put up a point and shoot. I would get, you know, film tested, the case and whatever, or nice condition and example photos. I would get maybe anywhere from 10 to 30 people message me about it. Now, some of them are, but the old tire kickers, is this available? And you never yeah. hear from them again. Uh, I would yeah. get a lot of people, oh, can you show me more photos taken with the camera? And like, yeah. I, I, I always think. I can't understand why they're asking that. I always think it's an idiotic question because unless they're in the same position with the same camera with the same skill as me, and don't get me wrong, they might have way more skill than me. Yeah. But unless yep. they have all that those combination, they're not going to just take by the camera and they'll take the same photo. They take me, the same photo. Yeah. I mean? It's not be that same like pla- same lighting and. I know. Yeah. 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 So I, yep. I always think that's funny bizarre. too. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, like when people want to buy the camera that that person has. Like, yeah. I've done that before. Like. Yeah. Um. And and you're like, oh, now I'm now my photos will look like it that. Same, and I was like, that's right. Oh yeah. no, they don't. Yeah. I have seen. I I sold a few cameras a, a few weeks ago. I think we talked about it in a previous episode. I've got one up there at the moment, and I've only had two people ask about it. Um. Mm. Admittedly, it is a bit more expensive because basically it's costing me more money now to, um, to test the camera. It's costing me like almost fifteen dollars for a roll of film for C two hundred. It cost me fifteen bucks my last roll of that. Yeah. It's costing me. What fifteen dollars to get the film developed? Uh, I just lost money on one camera. I had to re, you know refund the lady kind of thing because yeah, yeah, it, it was something wrong with it after I gave it to her, which sucked. But which I did the right happen. thing, and yeah. So you kind yeah. of, you know, it's yeah, it's it's a weird thing, hey. Yeah, yeah, I think it's definitely like yeah, de- decreased and um, yeah, like it'll price a lot of people out, you know, yeah. especially you know, young shooters. people. Like, yeah. like, oh, this is yeah. cool, and then they look and they're like, oh, that's a bit too much. So yeah. I, I don't think it's going to put off people like me and you, the diehards no. who've got film in their fridge or freezer, who've got the cameras. Mm. It's not going to put us off because we've we've you know, like I could. I was talking to someone about this the other day actually, and I could probably. Um, you know, with the film that I've got, I could probably keep shooting for two years. Now, yeah, towards the end same. of that two years, it would be black and white film. Oh, so grim. Particularly like, grim. That, yeah. that, would be, that would be the dark days, <laughs> shooting black and white only. But, you know, I could do it for sure. Yeah, yeah. It's interesting. I think maybe that's why it's good that, um, you know, there's like something like the H35 that's just come out or like the Rito Ultra Wide and Slim or even, you know, some of the like plasticky reusable ones that I'm like, some on the fence about some of those, but um, a girl who, um, when I did my Rito ultra wide and slim video, she messaged me and said, um, you know, what film did you use? And she wanted some advice and she ended yeah, up yeah. buying one and she messaged me yesterday and she showed me her photos mm. and they looked so good. I was like, mm. these look awesome. Like, well done. Like you did such a good job. Yeah, and, yeah. Um, she's loving it. Um, I think she's in the Philippines she's maybe. Um, yeah. She's, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's, what, that's one of your stock <laughs> phrases, isn't it? <laughs> She's loving it. Um, so, yeah, bad, bad. she... We should get a jingle in the show. We Yeah, we'll need to get Lux to make us a little jingle. Um, this analog hour break is sponsored by McDonald's. <laughs> oh, God, can you imagine? <laughs> Going corporate. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, but, yeah, so things like that, like that's made it accessible for her to get that camera, whereas you, know, you kind of know that they're going to work. It's not like you buy, a, like, you know, an electronic, like, point and shoot and then, you know, it, then it breaks mm. and all of that. So... Um, those are good options for like new newbies, I think. Newbies. Now, th- speaking of um, how much money us film photographers spend, I did a TikTok during the week, which I believe you saw. I did. Um, yes. And it's, it's basically, there's a, you know, always all these memes on TikTok. And so one of the memes where people took the audio from Johnny Depp's trial, where he was, be- I don't know what he was being asked about. He was being asked about like, um, it was just a constant, um, like just questions about like, um, or, or, um, like articles that had been written about him um, right. and they were, it was negative and, you know, right. people had been saying these things about him. So he was like, you know, Hollywood reporter says blah, 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 blah. Is that, is, am I reading that correct? Yeah. And Johnny yeah. Depp just got so over it. He was like, yeah, you're yes, reading that correctly. And then it just ended up reflecting correct. badly on the lawyer mm. and like so well on Johnny Depp. So, so people took that. I didn't act, I kind of wasn't following the trial too closely, but I did on TikTok. People would take that. And so someone I, I, I saw and here in Australia, 
she said, um, you know, she did it for TikTok. Um, when I'm explaining the credit card, joint account credit card purchases to my boyfriend, and it would come up Kmart and all yeah. these clothing stores. Yeah. And he was, it was like he was interrogating her. So uh, I thought that was very yep. clever. Yep. Was, this was a few months, a couple of months ago. And so I mm. did one of, of me, you know, a uh, film film photographer's credit card audit where it comes up, you know, Polaroid, Ikigai Film Lab, Adox. So that actually did really well. I think I had like 1,400 views of that. Well done. Uh, and then I've done, I've done three more TikTok. I've done four TikToks in my last week. I've, I've been going TikTok crazy, Lisa Lumen. Awesome. So, and it's funny, one of the ones, one of the, the trends on TikTok at the moment, I don't know, you probably have, you, you kind of got an account, but you're not really I made on there. the account and then people follow me and, you know, oh, and you I just haven't done there. anything it's, with it's it. Like, I'm just really well, scared. It's very intimate. Like as soon as I open the app, I just feel like there's just like so many things just like coming there are, at yeah, me. Like it's very yeah. intense. Like, you know, yeah, I know I'm quite an intense person, so I'd probably fit in well on there, but. Yeah. Yeah. Well, one of the trends is uh, it's been around for a couple of weeks is Teenage Dirtbag. So, you know that song by Weezy? Yes, Teenage I know Dirt. that song. So, yep. you have the background song, and then you um, you put, uh, so here's you, here's the me at the moment, and then you. Oh, so you- and then you put all your photos of when you were young. So, this is me in 1996, oh. before you were born, Lucy Lumen. Yes. Yep. Um, so, and there's a couple of young ladies on there. Just people oh, like I we, tra- we travel this. with. I want to see this. I want to see young. You need to get on Matt. TikTok. Yeah. You need to okay. get on TikTok. Well, that's enticing um, me. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely. And um, my wife, my son liked it this morning and showed my wife. I think I showed my wife and she wasn't very interested. In it. But then when my son, my son said, "Ah, oh, Dad's on here with his girlfriends," and of course, then oh, Mum wanted to see. Just Sarah was you. like, "What are you doing?" Girlfriends. I said, "They weren't, <laughs> they weren't girlfriends. They weren't girlfriends. It's friends." They were just, they were just, fr- was, yeah, we used to travel with people and have photos of people and, yeah, you know. yeah, yeah, um, it's pretty, pretty normal, it's funny, yeah. One of the, I said to my wife, I said, oh, Elodie's on there. Uh, of course, Elodie is my daughter's name. And the reason, mm, and I first heard name. the name Elodie in not, when, on my travels when I met a young French lady named Elodie. And I said, oh, Elodie's on there. My wife's going through the video and watching it about three times. And I'm like, what is she doing? She goes, where's Elodie? I can't see Elodie on here. I was like, there she is. She goes, that's not Elodie. I said, that's the first the original I met whose name is Elodie, where I got the inspiration for our daughter's name from. I said, funnily enough, our daughter wasn't born in 1996. No, she she's, possibly not in the, video? she's not appearing in this TikTok. <laughs> uh, it's exhausting sometimes. <laughs> Trying being to explain a, the, the TikTok. Being a family yeah. man. <clears throat> I know, I know. Very exhausting. Um, Father's Day coming up. It is Father's Day here coming up. in Australia, up. September. Yes, mm. that's true. Yes, Lux asked for something the other day and I sh- like shot him down because I was like, because like, we got out. <laughs> Yeah, he, he would. There's one in an antique store here on the yeah. Gold Coast, the Lacker M6, and he's always like wants to go in that shop oh, no, just I said to look at R6. it. R6. Oh, R6. I thought he said M6. No. Okay. I thought the one he keeps sending me one was it was it an M6 he keeps sending me? I think I so. It was yeah. An M3. Oh, okay. Or maybe yeah. it was an M3. I don't know. Yeah, I think he it's an said, M3. Yeah, he said he's sending you one because he's trying to like wear you down. <laughs> So that you no, buy it I, and then we can borrow it. Every time I've ever said I was going <laughs> to thinking about, yeah, yeah. Every time I've ever said I was going to buy one, people would say to me, like in a nice way, they kind of say to me, what do you want one for? Yeah. Like, you're not a yeah. range finder guy. I'm like, no, oh, you're not a range finder guy. I might be a range finder guy. I, I might spend my kid's inheritance just to prove to you that I am. Oh. Who are you to tell me I'm not <laughs> a range finder nasty. guy? Yeah, I'm getting a bit <laughs> like an angry chicken here, you know? No, I don't think it suits you at all, and that's good. We don't need more like a people, you know. Like, we need more like you need more and like old camera guy. Need more Lucy's. More Lucy's, obviously. <laughs> more Luxes. <laughs> more Luxes. Here we are, just talking about how great we are again. Yeah. Um, I'm just checking our agenda here of what we've gone off the rails. We have gone off the rails, but it's good. I think this is all good stuff here. Um, and I'm sure a lot of people will relate to the feeling guilty and will now yeah, feel and ne- will now not feel guilty because we have um a, They're probably a, unsubscribed a, by now the way the conversation's <laughs> been going. <laughs> they've they've turned off. Um We're a turn off. I think the other thing that we were gonna talk about, which I think is a very a very, very good topic. Yeah. How many um keepers I think you saw this written on a Facebook post or something like that, and we were talking about it. Um, how many keepers do you get on a roll of 36? You've got the, is this the Lucy's like burn book? <laughs> bones to pick with Lucy Lumen. To, okay. All right. Let's go. What are you, yeah, before what are we you go bones? through that, Before we go through that next topic, I thought there's just one bone i got to pick with you. There's probably right. multiple bones, but there's only one bone I can remember that I, I must okay. have been neglected to you write have. them all down. Yeah, there's a lot of but, empty pages there. <laughs> Uh, no, this is the next one. I got. Uh, I must be. Anyway, there's not a lot of empty pages. I can assure you. Anyway, um, so um, the other day I was I was uh, got a voice message from you, 
and you said it was a Friday. It wasn't the Friday yesterday. It was one before that. And you said okay. you had all these things to do, but you've just been sitting <gasps> oh. around doing nothing. <laughs> and you and you used my word as a my, used my name as a verb. You said, yeah, I've got all these things to do. I haven't been very productive today. I've been Matt Murraying. <laughs> what the hell? You used my name as a verb. Yes. For procrastinating. For procrastinating. Well, because, like, you know, very often we'll, we'll voice message back and forth and, you know, you say, like, ah, oh, you know, I'm I'm doing this, but I should be doing this and I've got all this to do and, ah, oh, but then there's work and, and it's like how you haven't, you know, you haven't done the thing, like the one yeah. thing, you know. So I just thought, oh, well, you can relate because you know how it is. Wow, Matt, it's in the book now. Matt Murray. <laughs> <laughs> I saw that in the Trello board. Yes. We, we have a Trello board where yeah. we, for each episode where we keep everything, you know. Yeah. Uh, and I saw it, Matt Murray, and I was like, oh, and I put Lucy Lumining because I thought you were just using that as an umbrella term of what you've been uh, doing. Like, what have you been <laughs> up really? to? I've just been Matt Murray, and I was like, well, I've no. just been Lucy Lumining. Like, no, you I didn't know, see that. I making see videos, that like. I thought you were just like, oh, I'm sick of listing the things I've been doing. I'll just say I've been uh, Matt Murraying. So. No, no. So I didn't realise that was a bone. No, but, where, where, uh, is, where is that? I can't even see it now. Anyway, uh, contact with both. Uh, yes, I can see it now. Very funny. Yeah. Um, yes. Yeah, so anyway, back to the uh, the topic. Yes. Um, so how many keepers do you get on a roll well, I, of 36? Well, I saw this. There was a conversation on Twitter and then I saw it somewhere else in a Facebook group and I thought this was rather fascinating. There was a Twitter. I, I go on Twitter maybe a few times a week just and I, you know, only for about 10 minutes at a time. Mm. But there are some very interesting film people on there. And there was a conversation and people were saying, there was a conversation someone started up, how many keepers do you get on a roll of 36? And some people were saying, like, I'll, I'll get one if I'm lucky or I get, sometimes I get nine or, or and I, th I thought this was rather oh. fascinating because mm. to me, like if I'm using a new camera, like for example, that Ricoh R1 that I just bought, there's a problem yep. with the light seals. Yep. Is it, is a distinct possibility I won't get a single photo on there I like because maybe they're all trash. Yeah. Um, or, you know, sometimes you use an experimental film and it's, it's aged too much and it's they're too dark and they're too grainy and they're horrible. So yep. you know, there is potentially times when you're doing something different or experimental where you won't get a single roll, single frame that you like. For sure. However, if you're using a camera and film combination, fresh film, and you're using a camera that you know works well, your favorite cameras you know i my answer was i would get between five and 15 photos a roll that i love mm -hmm. um and now that doesn't mean that they're five to 15 photos per roll that are award-winning that are going to get me signed up by magnum photo right <laughs> yeah. but they're, they're photos that i love that and, you like yeah i was quite shocked everyone how low everyone's yeah. oh, I'll get zero to one per roll oh, someone said i might get one every five rolls and i'm like oh my Gee, God. i think you i think you're doing this i felt like saying yeah. you don't want to be a gatekeeper you know but no, i felt like no. saying if you're only getting one shot per roll that you love, I think you're doing something wrong. Yeah, you need to like, reassess or like yeah. maybe get like comfortable with just one camera in one film stock. Or, or maybe like, their standards are too know. high or they're, they're trying yeah. to, I, See, I don't know. See, that's the thing. It's very subjective. Like this is, isn't a is. cut and dry kind of like this, you know, these are the shot. how many shots I get. Like, yeah. you know, pe some people are really hard on themselves. Like yeah, I would say sure. Lux is like that. Like, yeah. That last role he was very down and i was like oh there's like plenty of like cool shots on there and people were like liking like commenting on instagram saying this is really cool or this has such yeah. a cool vibe but you know he's very not that you should put your worth in what other people say but yeah. that would make me feel better but he's very like i need it i need to know that like i think that it's good you know so, yeah, yeah um so it depends on like your personality um yeah. i think for me i get I don't want to sound like arrogant either, but I would say I probably get. Are you saying that I sound arrogant? No, 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 not at all. Just because mine's more than yours. You said. <laughs> it's gone in the book. Gone in the book. Um, you said like, you know, f f yeah, like yeah, anywhere yeah. from five to 15. I would probably say that I would get like 20 that I'm yeah. happy with or, or, or make sometimes, sometimes more. Um, yeah. As long as I'm not shooting a, like you say, a new, like a new mm, camera. Combo. Like when yeah, I. Yeah. Put my first roll through the T4. I was kind of like, well, some of them I was too close, so they were out of focus. Yeah. Like I didn't know the camera that well. That's right. Um, but I, normally I get yeah, like upwards of like twenty shots. But in saying that, I am normally always shooting like f8 or above. So yeah. focusing is pretty focusing easy. Focusing is not a problem. Focusing is not a problem at all. How, but when you say you're shooting f8 or above, there's very few of your point and shoots where you can choose the aperture. Well, I mean, if I, if I am choosing, then oh, that, okay. that's what I'm Sorry. choosing. But yeah, or yeah, yeah, I'm shooting yeah. in a point and shoot where it's kind of doing it for you. And I'm normally in, in, bright conditions. in very bright conditions, which also makes things yeah. so much easier. Like I've got a, quite a foolproof system for it to come out 
well. Um, I'm also basically always shooting static um, sort of uh, scenes. Like I'm not, yep. I'm not shooting people because action shooting people. It's like you know, oh, that Horses. would have been a great photo, but your eyes are closed, or you're making a funny yeah. face, or you know, um, or like this is you know, you've got that this is moving and it's out of focus, or do you know what I mean? Mm. So I feel like everything about my photography lends itself to like the, the old motels don't move. They don't move. No. <laughs> That's true. Yes. Those garbage cans. Those garbage cans don't move. Those anywhere. shopping trolleys, as long as they're not on a shopping hill. Shopping trolleys move. They just well, they do move, but you know, not not in the not when they're like stuck in a. Not when um, you wedge them in a side in of a, hill. some precarious position yeah. that Matthew Joseph and I are photographing. You know, so yeah. so that so that's why my hit rate is higher. I think. Yeah. Um. And yeah, if I'm shooting with like the OM10, I feel like that's really solid for me. L35 yep. AF, like, I've, and even the Canon Shaw shot 76 zoom, like, I've never had an out of focus shot with that. Yeah, like, yeah. I just, I don't know if that's just me or, but yeah, just so, so for me, it's um, also, I don't mind editing a little bit. And I think that makes a difference because yeah. I shoot point and shoots, sometimes it's hard to compose. So, like, I will crop a little bit because I'm like, oh, that just, yeah, if I take I that, that little bit away, it'll be a bit cleaner. And then I'll really love the shot. So, I, I do that as well. I mean, this is, I think this is a conversation we've already had, but I do the occasional cropping and I do the occasional straightening because I don't like Yeah, to, me know. too. But I've just brought up, you know, I get the contact sheets done by guy. maybe one, one or two rolls per batch I send down, I, I get a contact sheet. Mm. And so, I've just opened up a random one. This was my Fujifilm Class S with Color Mission, Adox Color Mission. And looking at it, uh, just to, this is 36 photos here in front of me. I would say that it's probably only there's at least 20 photos I love on this roll. Yeah. Now, some of them are of my kids. Some of them are, uh, like there's three of a car. They, they look the colors look fantastic. So to me, like I love almost every photo on this roll. Mm. And again, I'm not saying that these are prize winning, award winning shots and they should be in a gallery. No, but this is the thing. I think to me, I, I, maybe I just. I know what I like. I shoot what I like and I've got a good camera mm -hmm. and I, I, you know, the, these have come out how I expected them to, therefore I love them. Yeah. Um, so it's, I just find it interesting that other people are saying, oh, I don't, I, I'd only shoot one. I'd only have one in a roll I don't, I like. It's, it's quite like, wow. I, I don't think, yeah. I, I don't think I'd keep doing it if no, only one in a roll. No, Consistently I, one in a roll I like. No. i give I, it away. Yeah. For the price and not even the price, just like the way it would make me feel. Cause like, I'm very like, I need to be, like congratulated in some way. Otherwise I won't keep you doing something. You ought to be congratulated. <laughs> like I need to, you know, like not like validation, but I just like to, you know, yeah, I like everyone likes that feeling of success or, or you know, like um, I love getting like a roll back and it's like, you know, th they look good. That's how I wanted it to look. Um, you <laughs> and you feel like it's worth, it was worth the money as well. So do you know the ad? You ought to, you, it's probably way before your I think, time. No, you keep, you're really aging yourself on the analog well, I just had here. a birthday. I just had a birthday. I will let you know ad. my audience are mainly American. between 25 to 35. So, so are mine. Mm, yeah. Mine are 25 to 35 as well. That there's, an old, there's an old a classic Australian ad for uh, margarine. And um, so mum, mum puts. You know, this is the eighties, so things are a bit more, bit more sexist back then. You yes. know, mum, get, mum does the dinner, which I always thought was hilarious because in my house, my dad always cooked dinner, and oh. the teachers at school would always go, "When your mum cooked your dinner tonight," and I, I used, my dad cooked my dinner actually. So lady. progressive. I know, very progressive we were in some ways. Um, but you know, mum puts all this margarine on all the broccoli here, and then. And the ad goes, you ought to be congratulated because you just put margarine on the broccoli. Oh, my so, God. <laughs> Matt, you're, got, you're through the roof Australian the, the classic, right now. The classic. Oh, no, I know. Love, loving it. <laughs> I'm loving, loving all these uh, retro references to, to Aussie, Aussie I'll classics. have to YouTube the ad because old oh, ads are really here. funny to watch. Oh, <laughs> got, you've got it ready. I'm, I'm, sending, it to, I'm sending it to you. Send it to me. Definitely yeah. send it to me. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I think it depends on who you are, what you're shooting, how you uh, – what you're trying to achieve. Like if you're trying out a new style or something like I think street photography, I can imagine you'd have a lower hit rate maybe because like things just from what I've seen on YouTube, like when street photographers go out, they do those POV kind of videos, Yeah, yeah. you know, like sometimes you're not going to get great stuff, but maybe you just shoot anyway or like something doesn't quite come out the way you, you know, you thought or you missed the moment, but you know, you took the photo, but somebody walked, walked the decisive moment. you know, yeah, because that's a lot more kind of like you're at the mercy of like what's going on around mm. you like that day. Maybe you didn't have enough time to change the setting. So then it, you know. That so is a, we, we should talk about street photography one day. That is a genre of photography. I think that is 
very hard to get right and very easy to do badly. Uh, yes, it's very easy. To, Lucy no, Lumen? no, no, no. I agree with you. I think it. Yeah, I think we could definitely talk about street photography on an episode. Mm. Um, neither of us do it, but um, no. <laughs> so I, I don't it's know funny. I photograph on the street a lot, but I'm not a street photographer. I, yes, like yep. same with you. We photograph. Yep. We don't want the people in the photos, do we? No, no. I'm like, get We're out of my photo. Very <laughs> Very antisocial. <laughs> but yeah, no. It's 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 one that can look. It's one that can be very like emulated quite easily as well but then i feel like people might say that about my like our type of photography as well though so i mean everything's quite saturated now but yeah street photography can be yeah it can be done quite badly or uh, like people don't understand maybe the nuances behind it like yeah. you've got to really kind of look for something that is interesting it can't just be like otherwise sometimes it just does look just like I saw this guy you accidentally took on the street that you could have yeah. just taken with your well, iPhone. Thing, maybe I think a lot of I'd say ninety percent of the street photography photography I've seen in group, Facebook groups is pretty like yeah. I don't, I don't think it's good at all. I think it's literally that they're on the street with a camera and they've taken a photo. I don't think there's anything composition wise interesting about it. I, I think to me like there was a there's a German guy I can't remember his name. He's a YouTuber and he um, oh he's got a it's a, it's, it's Sir something. Everyone, oh, everyone yeah um the, real Sir. So is it the real Sir Robin? It's the real Sir Robin. Yeah, that that's guy. Yes, yeah, he's not, been not... in a Hashem video before. Oh, wow. Yeah, not the real yeah. Sir Kermit. Sorry, it wasn't Kermit. The real it was Robin. Sir Kermit. Well, uh, Robin, real yeah, Sir yeah, a, <laughs> Didn't Kermit have a, 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 a nephew called Robin? I don't know. I don't know a whole lot about um, the Muppets. About the Muppets. So I mean, <laughs> you can put that. You can put that in the book. book as put well. that in your pipe and smoke it. Yeah. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> so anyway, it's the real Sir Robin. So the real Sir Robin was in. It was the first video I've ever watched of his. I, I would I would like to go watch some more. And he was in Mexico City because I was thinking, where the hell is this? This looks amazing. This yeah, I think Mexico I've seen City. this one. Yeah. Yeah, and he walks around and he's taking these photos and he's a guy with him and he's got a camera. His like his street photography was really I really enjoyed that. Um, maybe because I could see where he was going, and what he was doing, and the pictures he was taking. Mm. But like I think some people like him do it really well, and then but a lot of other people you see photos and you go, what the hell, like that's just a bag of crap. In my opinion. Yeah, yeah. Crap. Yep. Yeah, definitely. I think it's, yeah, it's definitely a topic we could talk um, more about. I think YouTube has really like um, uh, given street photography like a boost as well because you've got all yeah, like yeah. the Fujifilm people doing street photography and then a lot of those, they a lot of them are like using like film as well, but they're mixing yeah. film and digital, which then increases their like popularity and like mm. reach on 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 YouTube. So, yes. um, yeah, I think a lot of people see that, and then they're like, I want to be a street photographer. So, yeah, um, but <laughs> even though there's no money in it, I mean, is there any money in it except for YouTube? I don't, I don't think so, but it is it. quite mm. a popular like topic on YouTube for sure. Mm. Like it's yeah, very yeah. people really like, and then because you get you you get to see like it is kind of more interactive because you get to see the city. Like of like you said, like the real Sir Robin, he was in Mexico, so you get to mm. see Mexico. So especially through COVID, I found like that was really interesting because you're like, oh, yeah, cool! Yeah. Like I get to see this place and feel like I'm walking around yeah. there, and then like they're photographing it, and it's more. I think some know. places are more conducive to this though than others. Like Mexico City was just like crazy. There was like people like I, I can't remember exactly, but I think it was like someone carrying putting mannequins in the back of a car, right? Yes. <laughs> like, and then there was someone with a big trolley pushing stuff down the middle. There was just stuff that went on there and there's people everywhere in the street and there's stuff that go on there. And I was looking at it going, this would, this would never happen in Brisbane. You'd never see this stuff in, happen in Brisbane. No, no. Like it can be quite boring in some places. And I think like, yeah, that's probably why we don't do that. You know, yeah. like we're more photographing like yeah, think, the other things that we have to offer here. You know, maybe it's maybe it's like I know that when I go to Indonesia, like Indonesia, the developing country, and you know, there's a lot of people there, and I think that that would be a you know, that would be a brilliant place for street photography as well. Mm, uh, maybe yeah. then again, maybe it's just that I'm used to Australia, and I you want you always want to photograph somewhere different. Maybe I don't know. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Yeah, the grass is always greener. I think um, I've derailed the conversation. Sorry. <laughs> No, it's totally fine. It was a good it, street photography is a good one. We can chat about more in the coming episodes. Should we jump to? Um, do you want to do playlist or listener questions, Matt? You choose. Um, you choose. I think we'll go we'll go some listener questions because I have got um, a few here. I'm just grabbing them up on my gotta, phone. Got to serve the people here. <laughs> We're here gotta, for the people. Gotta remember who's paying the bills. <laughs> here for the community. <laughs> oh, lost my microphone. So. 
I have a question from my podcast guest, um, Jonathan, saying, "Has Matt seen the dish?" And you have, so yes. there we go. That one's good film. Um, that one has has been answered. I, it's a good, uh, it's an enjoyable film. I wouldn't say it is like the best Aussie film ever made, but I did enjoy it. And the fact that I used to work for, uh, well, as a contractor for CSIRO, yeah, I, I did have a personal interest mm. in it as well. Yeah, 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 definitely. Okay, so this question is from P underscore. Co- Koch one, I don't know if I'm saying that right. Um, he or she said some say get the exposure right, others say overexpose C41 film. What do you two do? Um, well, I usually just uh, do you want to handle that one first? I got well, tongue tied. I mean, like most people that I've seen, like on YouTube and stuff, or like if you, you know, it's people are giving tips on how to shoot film or like what you should do with film or whatever most people say to overexpose like you're always better off overexposing than Mm. underexposing I would agree with that for sure um but I think I just get it right like when I shoot you know I I just it's hard for me to answer because I'm not somebody who's like playing with any of the settings normally I'm like shooting on auto because I'm Mm. lazy um but I would say I would say, you know, try, maybe try both. Um, but if you're unsure, then maybe over or overexpose, like rather than underexposing. But yeah, what do you think, Matt? I think it depends. Yeah, it depends on what camera you have. I mean, for example, if you're talking about a basic point and shoot, mm. you know, you have no options. It's DX coded and you have, there's quite often, there's no exposure compensation. So mm. you don't have an option to overexpose. You just, unless you hack the DX code, you just got to shoot it at box speed at normal exposure. Yeah. Um, even when I'm shooting with cameras like my class S where there is an overexposure, I'll, I'll occasionally um, crank up the, um, the, the uh, exposure compensation dial, but quite often I just sort of shoot it at box speed at normal yeah. settings. Sometimes I'll give it one extra stop of exposure compensation, but um, I think it just depends on what you're shooting. I, if anything, lately I've been purposely under like underexposing the film of course because i'm pushing film so i'm yes. i'm rating yep. a 400 film at 1600 and then getting yep. the lab to push it two stops which gives it extra saturation extra contrast yeah um yep. so yeah i if, for example if I, I was going out today and doing a portrait session and i was shooting on you know portrait or or kind of gold yeah i would definitely shoot it i'd probably do it one stop over or i'd probably even bracket it you know do some shots at two over one over yeah, box yeah. B, just to see you know, I've done it before, but just maybe to see which shots are like better or. Yeah, you know. yeah, for sure. It depends what look you like as well. Like a lot of people like that kind of more like over, you know, like the overexposed yeah. like look. Um, so, yeah, maybe try both. Um, I feel like I'm not the best person to answer that question, but I hope that that's helped you. Um, I, would, I would say, yeah, if, you've, if you haven't done it before, I would say if you've got a camera where you can do that, you know, shoot the same scene three times, two stops over, one stop over, box speed. Mm. And you see which in and you know shoot a portrait of someone, shoot you know a building, and or whatever you like shooting, and seeing yep. what effect that ha- that film has, and um, you know you you'll get to see what what it looks like and and mm. what you prefer. Yeah, definitely. Especially if you're somebody who shoots that way, like I would never bracket or do any of those things because, like, I just would rather get another shot in the bag that's of something different that might look it's cool. Interesting. We sh- we should talk about that because. Um, I think William Egg was it William Eggleston who said he never took the same photo twice. Yeah, he's famous for saying that. Like he only shoots one thing, but then once. there's a lot of um uh things to disprove that, like photos oh, okay. where he has done that. I mean yeah, he really? a, he's taken so many photos, so of course he's done that. But yeah, that yeah, was yeah. like a rule and that was one of the first like photography like rules that I ever like yeah. I heard him say that and I was like, Okay, I love you and what you do, so I'm gonna do that. So I try really hard to not um, well, I'm you know, photograph of, the same thing twice. I'm kind of the opposite. I, I'll take multiple things of the same thing because I'll take multiple shots of the same thing all the time because I feel like sometimes maybe I don't get the angle right or, uh, you mm. know, I will put an extra stop of exposure compensation in there and I'm, or I'm trying something out or I want to do, so I will all the time I do that. Mm. Um, actually that, that thing about William Eggleston, it, it actually, Reminds me of something. Who's the guy who did the Americans book? Robert Frank. Is it yeah, Robert yeah. Frank the so Americans? Someone posted yeah. in a group the other day that he shot an extraordinary amount of images um, yep. for that book. Like he shot, shot it over a number of years, years and he shot, yeah. I don't know, something like 200 rolls of film. It was maybe yeah. it was more than that. Something crazy. I think it was more, yeah. And there was 80 images in the book. So mm. people are looking at 
this book going, oh my God, these, mm-hmm. this, these photos are amazing. Of course they are. But yep. then thinking, well, there are 80 out of what, several so thousand many. photos. Mm. Yep. So and it, so if someone just took our greatest hits, Lucy mm-hmm. Lumen, out of. Oh, bangers. You know, <laughs> Absolute bangers. <laughs> well, you need a bloody big, like a thick book, <laughs> like an encyclopedia. <laughs> Move over, Eagles. Yeah, Stephen I don't know Frank. what's wrong with Robert Frank, but yeah. I yeah. Know. <laughs> but there you go. That's another interesting topic. Like we, we mm. look at these people, and but you've got to remember this is eighty images out of several thousand, perhaps. Totally. Yeah. You know, so it's an interesting conversation, isn't it? Yeah, like if a project like spans a really long period of time, like that, you know, like and you're only seeing the end product of the book yeah. or whatever. I feel like Kyle McDougall covers this really well, like these types of things on his podcast and his YouTube channel, because he's all yeah. about like the process of like you know, like the art, the artistic process of, you yeah. know, get making a book or all that sort of stuff. And like he says, like, you know, we expect things too quickly now and we yeah, disregard yeah. like the process of it process. and you just see the end result and it's like, oh, my God, look at that person's amazing book with amazing photography, but like you don't know like the blood, sweat and tears kind of no. behind um, behind it. So, yeah, so it's I found this, something worth reminding found this people post of. that someone's put, this is the Australian Film Photographer's Facebook group, and someone's posted, fun fact, Robert Frank's The Americans contains 83 images, okay, mm-hmm. selected from 28,000. Oh, my God. So Jesus. I thought it was 2,800. It's 28,000. Oh, my God. So there you go. That's, there you um, go, yeah. That's, that's a lot very of films ins- process. That's, it is, yeah. Imagine, 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 sending, imagine doing that now. Yeah, send that to Ikigai. 28,000 shots to Ikigai. <laughs> <laughs> Poor Pete. Uh, um, yeah. Devin scan them. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> By um, res contact sheets <laughs> yeah contact sheets imagine oh my god he could retire um, probably after that stash probably yeah yeah he could yeah maybe buy a house um yeah so i think i think that's really inspiring though like i hope that that's made people feel like oh wow like you know because it's, it's kind of harping back to the how many keepers yeah, yeah, on a roll. For sure, yeah for sure yeah yeah so that's um yeah i think that's i think that's inspiring um and that book is really good but i mean yeah if you've got that many images to choose from then of course you're going to get you know um like 80 or so that look you know look really good bussin um that bussin yes um oh, that's that, that reminds me lux has been saying what's the other one the fortnight one you yeet 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 yeah so every time luca throws something which is like every yeet two seconds because he's yeah. a boy and he's just like chucking stuff around all the time yeah yeah lux says oh oh stop stop yeeting that and i'm like oh god you're just saying that to like try and, you know yeah yeah oh, god um okay i've got a Question from N.P. Jensen, oh, yes. um, film, who is an, an avid watcher of both of our yes. channels, always commenting. Thank you so much. We really appreciate Indeed. Thank you, your NP. enthusiasm. Um, he said, is there a camera you'd like to own someday that you have no experience with yet? I'm sure that you can answer this, Matt. I feel like mine was the GA645 and we shot that together. Yeah. Um, and then also the 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 thirty five Ti. I've always looked at that and mm. you know watched videos on it, and I'd really like to, um, I'd really like to use it. I have no experience with it; I've never held one or anything. So yeah, yeah. What about you? Uh, I mean, immediately, uh, I probably I was going to say the X Pan, but then again, I have used it for a couple of rolls once. Mm. Um, so I probably I probably go the Mamiya Seven because I've mm. never used one. Actually, yes, I would go that yeah. too. Yes, oh, yeah. I forgot about cat. it because it's medium format. Copy cat. <laughs> I want that one too. I have to too. jump on my bandwagon. <laughs> Don't leave the Mamiya 7 to me. You just got to yeah, well, like, pitch my medium format dreams. Everyone like loves the Mamiya 7. Like yeah, but loves it. Again, it's it's one of those things like I'm not doubting it's a fantastic camera, mm. but it's it's like the X-Pad. It's gone up so much yeah, in value. Yeah, it's ridiculous. Like, you think it, you, you know, I mean, I'm not. I'm not one of these people who is saying it's the, that it's too expensive because it, it's just supply and demand, right? Mm, you, you, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. That's all it is. But yeah, but you, to me, if I bought one now, I, I would feel like I'm overcapitalizing. Where if mm. I bought a, I don't know, if I bought another contact CVS like eight six hundred bucks or something, I, I wouldn't feel like I'm overcapitalizing in that. Yeah. But if I bought my Mi Seven, I'd feel like, of you know. Oh yeah, I, know. I just feel like so much pressure. To like, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. I'd be like, oh god, like, and then when just, you get your I'd, first roll back and it's all crap, you'd be oh, going, oh, yeah, I'd just be like, oh no, why like, did I take five pictures of that rubbish bin? <laughs> why did I spend so much money on a camera to then take photos of <laughs> yes, rubbish bins? <laughs> that's right. Yeah, I think you'd have to. I think if you were like, if you were doing fashion editorial or something paid that would necessitate, it would be an easy purchase. 
Mm. You know, I'm not saying it'd be cheap, but I'm saying it'd be an easy purchase. You could justify it. Yes. But I think if you just if if you just want to buy it to muck around with, then mm, yeah, you know. exactly. I think so. Yeah, it depends what you're using it for. But yeah. um, but yeah, I'd be intrigued to try it at least. You know, and like see what the, all the fuss is about. That's the thing. If I ever won Lotto, and I don't play Lotto very often, so it's unlikely that I'll ever win. Um, but I always think about what I do, and I think if I won, as long as I, I was definitely, I hadn't. I hadn't misread the numbers. I had I had confirmation that I won. I'll be straight onto eBay. I get my Mia Seven oh, contacts G two X Pan. I can boom. Un- I know. I can only imagine you and Lux like would just be on eBay just constantly. Um. Okay. I've got a question from possibly a, a, a new film shooter. So I think we should definitely try and answer this. Um. Uh. Her name is Hey Hey Yo. Um. On hey. Instagram. Hello. Yes. She said, hi, Lucy. I'm still getting a hang of film photography. How do I meter on a fully manual camera? Oh, you gosh. Another one. metering question. People love People, people love, love me. Throwing... I know. I know. And especially me. I'm like, oh, God. You you, you take this one, Matt, and then we'll, we'll try and well, workshop it together. Of course, you could just go – you could learn the Sunny 16 rule, but mm. I, I'm, I've never been a big fan of the Sunny 16. Oh, not that I'm not a fan of it. I just – can't be bothered sort of thing. So I just yeah. use my iPhone. I have a little meter. It's called light meter, bucket yep. light meter, which okay. I think oh, yep. you can see it in my messy office from there. Hello. Oh, yes. oh, it's close at me. Um, so there you go. That's what I use. If, I, if I'm if i using a camera um, that doesn't have a meter, I, I would probably typically just use that. Um, there's other ways that you can do it. You could buy a dedicated meter. For example, I do have a, I have a flash meter, mm-hmm. uh, a Siconic flash meter. I only ever use it. It's, it's, it's a, it's like, it's a light meter you can use in for ambient light and also for flash yep. light. Yep. I typically only use it when I'm using flash. Um, for example, when I was using my little Lux Junior, oh, yeah, little Lux, Lux Junior. Junior review coming soon of mm-hmm. a Lux Junior. Yep. Um, when I'm using that, um, I, I use my light meter, um, you know, you can just use a phone light meter. They're, they're free or they're three or four dollars yep. and they do a fairly good job. If you are using a manual camera and you're just starting off, I would say, yeah, use probably use a forgiving film, use a color print film maybe or a black and white film that's got a lot of latitude. Yep, definitely um, that'll help. HP5 or HP5 I think has got a lot of latitude or, you know, Kodak Gold 200 or Ultramax 400 or Superior yep. 400. Yep. Use a film where, you know, if you're starting off, it doesn't matter if you're out by a stop or two, it'll still, it'll still look good, right? It'll still look good. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. I think film is like, you know, can be quite forgiving in that way. Um, but yeah, the, the, um, app light meters are pretty good. Um, like a lot of people like swear by them, yep. um, using like an external light meter, like, you know, could go down that road, but maybe try like the phone one first. Um, try sunny 16. There's a really great King Japes video that explains sunny 16 really well like very, very simple and he doesn't kind of give you any other, you know how sometimes film photographers when they're trying to explain something to new people, they like use a lot of words that that person wouldn't know and then they get kind of off track and it's like a little bit tone deaf to the new person. Um, His video is really great. So um, if you're listening, I will send you them um, so that you can um, check them out Um, or don't feel like you have to be using a fully manual camera as well. If you decide that it's not for you and you're not getting good results and you feel like you're wasting your money, try shooting on auto on a, you know, Nikon F60 or something like that. Um, or like one of those, you know, nineties SLRs or, you know, get a, um, a cheaper or in your price range, like point and shoot as well. And then, and, and try that. So yeah, that would be my it's advice. A, it's a weird thing. Like back in the seventies or eighties, people always learn on manual, fully manual cameras, but mm. I, I don't think I want to do a video on this, but I don't think it's the same advice necessarily applies today. No, like, I, I don't think so. You no. know, you don't need, if you, if, if you just want to take photos and you like composition, it's from yep. all the art side of it and the colors yep. and the textures, mm-hmm. you don't need to know necessarily know all of that, you know? Yeah, I think it's overcomplicated a lot. Like when I started, I was like, oh, I've got to learn all this stuff. And I had a book and I was writing everything down. And and it was like, I was kind of like, oh, this isn't really very enjoyable. Like I like, but I want to shoot film. I don't want to shoot digital because I think film's cool. So yeah, and now I'm in a really good place. And and, and some people would would love all that, but it's it's Mm. horses for courses, isn't it? Exactly. Yes. Um, Okay, a couple more questions. Um, We have a question from Wyatt Shoots Film. um, Who? Wyatt. Yes, who's an uh, uh, loves the show? So thank you for that. He said, "What is your number one all time favorite photo book, and why is it your number one?" Do you know this off the top of your head, Matt? I know mine. 
Mine is my own every summer <laughs> zine available at <laughs> mattlovescameras.com. <laughs> You go first. Mine is all my. I wish I had my own scene, so I could say that. Um, mine is. Um, I have a video on my channel about it. It's. Uh, it's called Jackpot by Kevin Landers, oh, yeah. and he's a was a New York street photographer. And I'm not normally a huge fan of street photography, but I absolutely love this photo book. The interview at the start. Um, he brings up music and like how much like punk music had an effect on him. Um, and just other things that really resonated with me. So I feel like mm. that kind of made me like the photos more. But the photos are really good. It's like kind of um, – it's if I was doing street photography, he focuses on the things that I would I would focus on. So it's yeah, not sure. always – doesn't always have people in it. And he seems to have a real focus on red as well, mm. like as a color, like as a theme throughout the whole thing. So yeah. just really cool. Yeah. So And I think the book is on – for some reason it's on Amazon and there's heaps of copies of it and it's like $7. Wow, it's, okay. So, yeah, it's like it's really cheap as well because photo books aren't – no, ordinarily like they're not cheap so yeah so um definitely check the video out if you want to um and the book is awesome kevin landers he's he doesn't shoot anymore um i think he he makes like antique furniture or something i found him on instagram and i sent him my video and he said thank you um wow. but he, yeah he does, he's not a photographer like anymore i don't think so kind of strange unknown guy like i put jackpot kevin landers in amazon and i'm getting really weird results oh really maybe they all sold out because my my video was a hit and <laughs> sure it wasn't ebay it was amazon it was um it was amazon that, that that i um linked to in the video and a couple of people were like i bought the book and yeah i saw that it was really it was like seven dollars or eight dollars or something i think there was like oh, wow. some second hand copies right and yeah, yeah, yeah maybe that's what it was because amazon's weird like it'll sell you something from a shop like yeah, uh, you, know? yeah, you can list your stuff on yeah, 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 must yeah. Must have all sold out. It must have all okay. sold out. But um, um, but yeah, that's my favorite photo book. What about yours, Matt? I don't think I have one. That's, that's why I was stalling. Um, and it's not that there's not a lot. I, I, okay, it's a bit like asking, you know, if someone has just recently bought their first film camera, and then you're going up to them, going, "Hey, what's your favorite film camera?" Like, I don't know. I just got this wine. Is it any good? I don't know if it's any good or not. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. I, I've heard of a lot of good photo books. Quite often the ones that I've heard of, I think Japan Camera Hunter was talking about one a while ago. I looked it up mm. and it's like $600 or something. Um, yeah. Because it's, you know, one of, the, one of the best. I think it was called Ravens by a Japanese photographer. Okay. Apparently it's it's very, very good book. Yeah. But I, I hear people talk about these legendary yeah. photo books a lot, but quite often they're very expensive. Mm. Um, I've, yep. I mostly have zines. I don't. Yep. They're really. a lot more affordable. Or I have photo, I have books written about photography by by people like, mm -hmm. you know, I think if I got a William Eggleston one over there, I think I have uh, yeah, or nice. someone. Um, so I, I don't really have or collect photo books, which is why I was hesitant to answer. To answer. Yeah, Not fair that enough. I'm, I'm sure they're amazing. I just don't have a lot of them and I don't feel confident yeah. giving you an answer other, other yeah. than every summer zine by Of Matt course. Murray, well, your zines are. Your zines are amazing, so I think you can choose every summer. It's like very oh, well put together, and it's got a story, and the photos are cool. So, yeah, you can choose that. Um, okay, we'll do uh one more, I think. Yep. Let me have a look here. Um, it's so hard to choose. I've got a question from C A Nicola. He's saying, "What is your favorite film stock for sunsets?" I. I don't really shoot very much at sunset, so mm. I would struggle to answer that. But I did shoot Portrait 800 kind of in like the later afternoon yeah. and, and, and Lux shot some portraits kind of in sort of, you know, yeah, like later in the afternoon when the sun was going down and um, they looked, they did look really nice. So mm. maybe, maybe that I would pick. I don't know. But yeah, I don't ordinarily shoot at that time. But you do, Matt, don't you? I shoot quite a lot at, at dusk and I don't, I shoot... I guess I would shoot sunsets, but not intentionally. Like I would probably shoot more the color in the sky against a building or, mm. or something like that. Yeah. Um, I shoot handheld, so I don't. Yeah. Um, you know, a lot of, if, you shoot, yeah. if you're purposefully shooting a sunset or a sunrise, you probably have a tripod yep. and shoot it that way. But I don't. Yep. I, I shoot handheld. So yep. I usually go for a fast film. So something 400 and up because I know it's going to get dark very quickly and I'll, I'll want to take photos in the golden hour and the blue hour afterwards mm, yeah so i'd want to i usually would shoot something 400 and up and if even from shooting 400 i might rate it at 800 or 1600 mm -hmm. or i like lomo 800 is good but it's gone up in price yeah portrait 800 but i've just recently used all my portrait 800 um so yeah that's that's what i'd shoot yeah nice yeah i really liked portrait 800 i thought it was you know like it's expensive but it did look 
it did look really good, especially the portraits at the end, like in that light. It was just like, yeah. oh, so nice. Um, awesome. All right. Well, let's move on to um, playlists. So oh, yeah. we do a playlist every um, every episode and you, it was my turn to choose a film last month and I chose Ektar 100 because that's did. my favourite film. And Kelsa people voted. Breeze, as the French would say. Yes. People voted. There was 35 votes altogether. I'm not sure if that's more than last time. Now, can I, just um, remind, I, I haven't actually looked at the results, but I have to jump in here. Okay. We, we have established in a previous episode, episode of the Analog Hour, anything mm -hmm. over 30% or more is a win for Matt. Because it's, it's like a handicap. It's weighted. Okay. 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 So what, what are the results, Lisa Lindsay? Okay. So the results are 30, 35 people voted. Lucy's playlist, 77%. Matt's playlist, 23%. So not quite getting that 30%. Oh, it was close. <laughs> I'm really surprised because I really liked your playlist and I you thought know, it was really good. And I admittedly did rush mine a little bit because I knew like two songs I wanted to put on there, but yeah. then I couldn't kind of decide on the other two. So I was a little bit like quick yeah. to decide. So, you know, I was thinking about this. You know, what I think the problem is. What's the problem? Come on, make, make excuses. Well, the problem is, is that, as you know, I lived in the UK for a long time. Mm -hmm. Yes. And how many of my songs that I've chosen on my playlist so far have been British? I think quite a few. The last one was very British heavy. Yes. Which I so like. My, like I, I guess I like my, I'm not making excuses. However, I think a lot of your audience um, perhaps are American and may not have heard of some of those songs. Maybe. Yep. And so maybe they're Could naturally right. gravitating to your ear bleeders because they've heard of them. This is true. Yes, definitely. So that, I that think... is part of the reason why the, the okay. bar has been set at 30%. Okay. All right. So if, we, well... if we're setting the bar at 30%, how many have I won? Just one. Um, I think so. I don't have all of the stats for every. We've we done two or three. I think we've only done. I think we've only done two. What did we do? We did. Purple and Ektar. We did purple. Yeah. We did purple okay. and Ektar. Now you have chosen um, this month, you have yep. chosen Ilford HP5. HP5. Yes, yeah. which is kind of like for us because we never really shoot black and white. You've got a role coming back from Ikigai. I'm excited to see some of your black and white. Agent Shadow, um, yeah. Agent Shadow, yes. But, um, but yeah, we don't shoot black and white. So, no. so um, do you want to go first with your playlist? Because I actually don't know. I haven't seen any of your playlist yet. So no, do you want to give, haven't, haven't do you wanna try you, and actually. sell it to the people to get you 30%, Matt? <laughs> well, uh, hey, look, 30% is a win <laughs> I, as far as I'm concerned. I was actually going to swap out one of the songs on here, but. Um, do you want to do you want to do yours first? Okay, I'll do I mine can, first. I can procrastinate. I can Matt Murray in the you background. You can Matt Murray be Matt Murraying in the background. Um, so my playlist, which I'll link, I'll link these below, and I will post on Instagram so you guys can go and listen to them, and then you can vote over on the community tab on my channel. So mine, I I chose Shadow Play by Joy Division, which is the most depressing song I think by Joy Division. All of Joy Division songs have a level of depressing depressiveness to them um shadow play in particular um mostly because um well with joy division i get a real black and white vibe because um anton corbin who sh you know shot shot you too your favorite band um they shot shot uh joy division and then he also yes. directed a movie about them called control which i've talked about with mike gutterman before it's a great movie and it's all shot in black and white joy division have a very black and white vibe like you know north of england dreary kind of it's grim up north so i was like perfect choice for black and white then my next song is pop crimes by roland s howard which is also very very extremely depressing roland s howard was in the band called the birthday party with nick cave so uh, that was okay, nick cave's yeah, yeah. first band and then they kind of had a bit of a rivalry i'm not a huge nick cave fan um so people tend to be in like a nick cave camp or a roland s howard camp he was like the kind of overshadowed in my opinion, more talented um, person in the duo. Yeah. So, um, bit, yeah. A bit like me in this duo. <laughs> yeah. I was just going to say, we need to, someone needs to make that. So, um, um, yeah, I've chosen that. That whole album is really great. Um, so, what's his name, R Roland? Roland S. Howard. Okay. The only um, Roland I know is Roland Rat. British listeners are, know who Roland Rat is. He was a. I don't know who that TV. is. TV. Okay. Is this before my time? Well, it's, you, you ask, ask your mum and dad about okay, Roland Rat. I'm dad. sure they'll, they'll know. know who Roland Rat was. They'll yeah. know. He's very annoying, actually, Roland Rat. Okay. Um, then the next one is 
I mean, I got a little bit jokey here with this playlist because like, you know, it's, it's, it's widely known that I don't really shoot black and white and I love color. So I chose heaven knows I'm miserable now by the Smiths because I'm shooting HP five and I'm miserable. (laughs) And then the last song is by a doom band called electric wizard who Lux and I are huge fans of, and was one of the first things other than film photography that we bonded over. And he couldn't believe that I was a girl and I liked this record. Sexist um, behavior. Not I know. Tolerated I know. Yes. Gower, not, e- not accepted, Lux. You um, got like a taser that you can taser Lux with. <laughs> we'll just cancel him. Um, so, fun. It's called the song is called Funeropolis, and it's like end of the world, like apocalyptic, like you're on a plane and your plane's about to go down kind of vibe song. Sounds cheery. Because just in time well, for Christmas, Lucy just in time, playlist. But yes. <laughs> yeah, don't listen to this playlist if you're already in a bad mood, um, unless that's your thing. But yeah, because that's it's kind of a joke because like, you know, I don't think I've ever shot HP5 either, but yeah, black and white doesn't make me want to run out and shoot film. It's like the opposite I, to Ektar, So I shot a couple of roles a few years ago. It was actually for the Frugal Film Project in 2020. I started shooting it. Okay. Um, and we... Yeah, and I actually really enjoyed it. And then I just I haven't shot any since. But I should because I, I look back at those scans sometimes and go, these are yeah. really nice. It's quite flat um, though, isn't it? Like I don't I really don't know. I think the, so. No, it's not I, flat? Okay, because I, I, I always feel like think it's... I so. Okay, all right. Maybe I'm getting that wrong because I like a very contrasty yeah, black and white. If I'm going good. to shoot black and white, I want it to be really, like really contrasty. So um, I'm just going to see if I can find some photos to share with you. But yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, okay. So that's very interesting. So you I think you should give HP5 another Maybe go. Maybe I you know? should. Maybe I'm being too hard on H- poor HP5. You're, you're very you're very harshly <laughs> slim. You know, the Sunny 16 podcast used to run a, a favorite film poll for a couple of favorite, you know, like the Sunny Awards. Every two or three years in a row, they, they run awards for the favorite this, favorite that. Every year it was favorite film. The winner is Ilford HP5. Yeah. Like, it, it mm. Just one people year love, after year. Yep. People um, love it. In my survey, it ranked the highest of the black and white films because everybody wow, said okay. it's so dependable and yeah, it's always available and blah, 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 yeah. which is great. That, that's great. I'm not bagging it, but. Um, <laughs> so well, the criteria I mean, was to, it's always available <laughs> and it's dependable. Wow. You really, you really. <laughs> Sounds really boring. People. Yeah. Um, so, <laughs> so my playlist, when I was thinking about the, uh, about this, I was thinking, well, you know, HP, Ilford are a classic British company, right? Yep. Um, so that, that that was the first thing I was thinking. And then I was thinking about, you know, classic British, you know, what are some classic British uh, music, okay? And so what I was thinking, actually, I've just found my HP5 pictures. I'm going to send them to you in the chat so you can have a look. Okay. All right. All right. I never, like, I always get worried with the the, the, the chatting and the, the looking at things at the Do same time. A, Actually, I'm going to send it to you on. Um, I'll send it to you on Instagram. Okay, all right. And you can you can check out these. Check out the tones, Lucy the Lemon. Tones. These, these are images I shot. Uh, they're on. They're still on the uh, on Sherry Christensen's Frugal Film Project site. But these are some images I took in Brisbane. Actually, there's only one there. Was there any one? I don't know. But but look at the, the that, that beautiful image there. I think it's really nice. I think it's kind of contrasty. Can you see it? I can see it. Yeah, it is really nice. Take on, on the new one. Anyway, it's just it's just loading. Yeah. It's kind of contrasty, but it's not like as contrasty always, as I want it to be. You crank it up in Lightroom. Yeah, maybe I could do that. I don't know. I mean, I don't really have much experience with black and white um, film. I've only shot a few of the, the, the Ilfords and I always get confused because okay. of the, the it's like Delta this and that. AB16. Yeah, and it's like really like it's not very like memorable. Um, FU3. Yeah. <laughs> FU2. <laughs> FU2. <laughs> That's a great name. That'd be, that'd be the Matt and Lucy film, F-U-2. Yes, yeah, if we ever do it, that'll be it. Yeah. But no, that's a really nice photo though. Um, I, Like I like black and white. And when I shoot black and white, I'm like, why, why am I not doing this more? But, you know, as long as I have colour film, it's like I'm always going to choose that. Yeah, you know? so, it's true. But anyway, okay. so keep going with your playlist, Matt, because I'm, I'm, I want to okay, know. Okay, sorry. I, I was procrastinating. I was Matt Murraying. Okay, <laughs> Matt so Murray. here we go. So I thought British, I thought classic, and I thought, well, what's more classic than the swinging 60s when, when, the, when, the, when, the, when the Brit pop, well, not Brit pop, but when the British ruled the waves, the, air, the, the airwaves all over British the world. British invasion, yeah. So we've got to kick off. So I'm thinking mid to late 60s here. So at 1960s uh, fans, you know, in case you're getting confused. Uh, so first we've got to kick off with um i got four four classic bands here the who the kings the beatles and the stones oh okay. what a what a playlist what a lineup what a, what lineup. a lineup oh my so god how much does it compete with this <laughs> with my depressing playlist <laughs> well your, your your fans of your show probably haven't even heard of these bands so the first one is my generation by the who oh, great song classic yep. classic yeah now i was going to choose with some of these 
songs, I was actually going to choose the mono versions. Ah, Did you get it? Because so black clever. and white, mono. Yes. But no, but you you the didn't. stereo versions are better. So They're better, yeah. Always. My Generation yeah. by The Hoop. Then we're going straight on into You Really Got Me by The Kinks. Great song. Such a great song. Like the the, the guitar riff, like yep. the opening of that is like, oh, yes. Yeah, yep. it's really like, yeah, kicking the old ging gang Yeah. Next up is Norwegian Wood by The Beatles. Great song. Yep. Now, the Stone song, to, to, to finish things off, I was I was going to swap this out because I do like this song, but I thought, should I change it for a better known song? But in the end, no, I've gone for 19th Nervous Breakdown by the Rolling oh, Stones. I, lo- I love that song. I do. Yep. Oh, good. yep, I love that song. And I feel like that, you know, sometimes. There's a there's a, a best of record like that I have and it's got that on it and it's got mm. like Mother's Little Helper. Um, yeah. like, the lyrics to that I think are funny, like thinking about like, you know, the the – um, like little like pills that she's taking, yeah, yeah, like yeah. all of that. And I, and since becoming a mom, I do feel a little bit like that, like this frazzled, nervous breakdown kind of. Maybe I'll start drinking gin. Um, it's funny, do you know? In the um, we we watched um, we were on Paramount, we got Paramount Plus here, and we were watching the. I think we've watched some episodes of the Brady Bunch. We used to watch them on the Saturday morning. Like we used to think of, you know, watch them and eat our breakfast, me and my wife. And because my wife never watched this in England, the Brady Bunch, yeah. so she always thinks it's kind of funny. Yeah, yeah, true. And so we loaded up the pilot episode if it was a few weeks ago of the Brady Bunch. And there's a reference in there to, um, if they're getting married, Mike and Carol are getting married. And Carol says something to Mike, like, he says something about being nervous. And she said, is, is some kind of joke in there about, oh, just pop a pill. I already have. <laughs> yeah. So it's like, it, it was pretty common back in the common old, back then late to, 60s. Just, uh, yeah. You know, yep. what is it? I don't know what kind of pills they were. but I can't Jesus. remember now. I'm trying to think of the, the lyrics from that Stone song. But, yeah, um, yeah, I think he refers to it as like a yellow yellow pill or something like that. But, yeah, like, you know, you just take the edge off. But that's like my yeah. my um, my um nan, like she's 96, but she'll say, you know, she doesn't think there's anything wrong with smoking. And my, yeah. my grandfather was um like in the war. So she said like they used to give them cigarettes to like calm them down. And, For sure. you know, like it was seen as like a thing that, you know, to help you, you know, like yeah, like yeah, now yeah. how we're like meditate. Or like to go do yoga, yeah. wellness. It was like have a cigarette, have or a shoot pill, film. <laughs> a shoot film in our beanies. <laughs> oh dear. Uh, okay. Well, that's a that's a absolute. I'm voting for for your playlist. First time for everything. You know, I, I'm I, I'm loving it. So I'll be interested to see because that yeah, does. Lovely. It's very representative of Ilford. Like I didn't really think about Ilford as a company being very British, like very mm-hmm. iconic British, classic British. I just went with like black and white film. I'm not happy. Here are my four songs. <laughs> so we'll see who we'll see, we'll see who, who wins. wins. And quite frankly, time. you know, if this if this doesn't get above thirty percent, then I have no faith in the in oh, the, wow. in the, in no. the in your listeners to 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 make a, a decent vote. You know, because of course it's their fault, not yours. <laughs> no, not my fault. <laughs> it's okay, like well, classic tunes. people can um. Yeah, vote over in the community tab, and I will link them below, and I will share them on um. Share it on the community tab as well and on my stories on Instagram. So if you don't follow us, uh, definitely do that. Um, we kind of skipped over the content that we've produced, but did you oh want to yeah. just quickly give people a rundown of anything that you've put out or you've got coming up or you're working on? Or, no, you know, it's, where... it's been a, a frustrating period for me. As you know, I've been Matt Murray. You've been Matt Murray um, hard. Yeah. I've I put a video out at the start of August and I haven't done one since. I had a lot of plans for August, but been very busy on the home front. Work has been very busy. And so mm. when I'm not, um working and i'm kind of like oh, i just want to watch a movie or i just want to play Fortnite, or i just want to I, I don't want to do anything you know what i mean yeah um but i i'm the rest of august is t- 10 or 11 days left of august and i'm, I'm looking to go out on a bang so i've i've got Ooh. some more cool stuff going up i did a live last week on my my channel which is done yeah. pretty well you did um, so well congratulations i think thank you i think i'm going to do one every couple of weeks yeah i think you should um, you're so really you're good looking, at it like thank you oh, thank you man i think from podcasting like you're very like fluent and like just you know you had like lots of props and lots of exciting things to show and then you did the props. listener questions and like pingo like pingo yeah pingo yeah. Um, so yeah, I think I'll do another one of those. Um, but no, I haven't really, like I'm, I'm behind in my writing for F stoppers. I'm behind in my videos. The only only thing I've have got back on, I've got back on the TikTok wagon. Mm, Well done. Yeah. um, I'm enjoying that. Someone actually said to me today, they said, I did that, that teenage dirtbag video, which I'll send you. And someone put a very nice person. They're probably sucking up a little bit, but they put, (laughs) what did they put? What's the comment here? Um, Barely even aged. Oh, boy, thank you. Uh, oh, you know what to say to, to get me on side. Oh, you. To be fair, yeah, it was, 1996 grumbling. was a yeah. long time ago. 
Yeah, that's a long time 26 ago. 26 years ago, 36, 26 years ago. Yeah. You weren't born, Lisa Lumen. You were just... Uh... No, I was born in 92. So... Oh, you were four. Yeah. Same, same year as Kurt Cobain's daughter. You're born in the same year. Oh, yeah. Same I age. could have come around my house. This is the camera I had in 1996. Wow. Not not the actual one because I sold it. I traded yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. bought one since. This is the Pentax That's... Zoom 90WR. Yeah, yeah. Cool. Big, big heavy beast. Anyway, big what, heavy have you, beast, what, yeah. what have you produced, Lucy? Um, so I've put out that How to Save Money shooting film, kind of unexpected ways to – it's doing really well. Um, so it shows that people are definitely, you know, Broke. wanting – Yeah. <laughs> People have no money. <laughs> so I hope it's helped people um, a little bit. And there was a little funny kind of like kind of tiktok kind of bit at the start that we did, like a little skit. So that was fun. Um, so maybe we'll include more things like that yeah. in our videos. And then I have put out another one about Audrey Storm, who is like a lifestyle channel on YouTube, but she also does a little bit of film photography. And I really like her channel. And I think it's worth checking out, um, especially if you're a content creator, because it's good to take kind of tips from other genres. For sure. Like, how they've told their story or like how they've structured the video and stuff like that. So I just think she's a great content creator and cool, cool gal. Yep. Um, it'd be cool if I could get her attention and get her on the podcast, but I don't know if that'll happen because she's pretty big time. Hmm. Um, but I, I'll, I'll keep trying. I'll persevere. Same with Willem. You'll, you'll wear them down. <laughs> yes, I'll wear them down eventually. And yeah, f stop has been a bit slow. I've hit the, I've been Matt Murraying and I'm like, oh God, you know, um, but I do have an article <laughs> scheduled Um about podcasts, my favorite like photography podcasts. Yeah. So that's coming out, um, I think next week. I'm not sure. Um, and I've started writing a few um, other ones. So yeah. And then also my biggest news probably is that I have a newsletter now. Yes. So it's every Friday it's called Love Lucy and it's just like, yeah, recommendations, cool stuff that I've found, like that I want to share with you. Um, right it's, called, it's called Love Lucy until Lucille, Lucille Ball's estate finds out about it. Oh, yeah. And they'll take legal action. Oh, no. <laughs> like, lucky you left the eye off. Otherwise, you'd be in real trouble. Oh, I would be. I'd be in hot water there, wouldn't I? I didn't uh, even think of that. Oh, maybe that's no. why I was like, oh, that's a catchy name. And it's like, because no, it good. already exists. And thank you for the shout out in the, in the latest one. Did you think that I'd made that quote up? Well, I wasn't, I didn't think you'd coined it, but I didn't know where it had come from. And I just thought, I wish I was that why wise. not attribute it to Matthew Murray? Because I feel like you are really good like that. Like, I'll be like, oh, blah, blah. I'll be all like, HP5 playlist, just hating my life. And then you'll just come in with this, I'm a, I'm a, you know. I'm a little ray of sunshine. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, true. Yeah. Okay. That's put everything back into perspective for me. So I thought that might help people. But um, yeah, thank you to everyone who signed up. It's free. It comes out every Friday. It's good read. In inbox. Um, I'm enjoying um, doing it. I'm doing it through Substack as well. Um, and the app is really good. Like there's a couple of other things I recommend on there. So like on Substack that you can read. Mm. Um, and if you're looking to start any kind of thing it's free to make stuff on substack i think molly was saying she was thinking about doing a little Sweet. photography blog kind of thing on there so um yeah so yeah that's pretty much it um pretty much it from me i'll be shooting the that minolta hopefully tomorrow and have some um, other videos coming out and nice. i'm interviewing uh the lovely ally of one month two cameras next oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, on monday actually so excited to chat with her i had a lot of people message me like really excited to hear that hear that chat she's a photographer she's a mum. Mm. i'm like oh we are just going to talk for hours <laughs> so yeah that's um that's pretty much that's it. awesome look forward yeah. to that mm. i've got yep. um i guess on the horizon i've got yeah i've got i'm doing a review for f stoppers well if they you know uh, of this little of your, yep. beautiful flash here mm -hmm. which i really yep. i really like nice cheap and cheerful and very very powerful flash and your photos looked really um really good you said godox posted some yeah, I, I tagged them in uh, TikTok and then they, um, I think they said, they messaged me and said, can we share some of these? And they've shared them on their TikTok. And I think they nice might be sharing one. them on Instagram. I don't know. Mm -hmm. um, but I think they might be sharing them a bit wider as well. Um, and yeah, um, I actually saw some other photos that someone else had taken with the flash. And I was like, I didn't think mine were very good, right? <laughs> and, then I, mm. and then I'm not being mean, but I saw some other sample shots that someone else had took. I went, oh, actually, mine are kind of good, like mm, okay, comparatively. Yeah. Okay. Put it in not, perspective, yeah. And again, I'm not being big headed because out of the out of the shots that I shared on my TikTok, like it's about seven or eight shots. Like I probably took sixty shots. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. Of, and a lot of them were the same, or a lot of them. Well, some were too powerful. The flash was too powerful. Some wasn't quite right. And yeah, you got to so play there was around a lot of with it. Around, you know, yeah. It was the first time I used flash. it. Yeah. But I was doing a review of that Lux Junior Flash, which you can use on your film camera and your digital camera. And I've got that's nice. another roll I've got. I burnt a roll. I forgot to tell you about this. 
So my contacts G1, I put mm -hmm. this little bad boy to, it's got a single pin on there so you can put it on digital and film cameras, put that on the top of my contacts G1 and I burned a roll of pro image through it using the flash. Nice. Cool. Um, so I'm hoping yeah. they're not a, a hot mess um, to use a Lucy Lumen style phrase. <laughs> Uh, otherwise, Pete from Ikigai is going to be looking at these cameras. Oh, like, I know. What the hell is this Matt Murray and these, these, these oh, terrible man. photos? What the hell is he doing up there? Why is he shooting film I for? I always think idiot. that once you like know the person at the lab, yeah, it's you're like, are you are you judging? My, I mean, he's probably way too busy to be doing this, and this is very like narcissistic yeah. of us. But I'm like, are you judging my photos? And so I message him, and I'm like, well, one of them was just a test roll, so you know, <laughs> yeah, like, I know, and make he's excuses. like, well, whatever, I don't care. But I know um, that roll that I took in the bath. I wish I hadn't sent one. <laughs> <laughs> what can you do? You live and learn, you know. You live, you uh, learn, yeah. You live and learn. So I'm, I'm looking forward to. It. I'm hoping that actually, I'm, I might delay the review just to see if any of the ones on the are taken on film turn mm. out. So I've got that. Yeah, I'm, also, I'm also doing a video very soon about. Um, does does your point and shoot? Does one point and shoot really matter over the next one? Uh, where I use the Canon Sure Shot Sleek, okay, and yep. I use the Pentax SBO Mini, both oh, yep. same focal length, same maximum aperture, same film, Portrait 800. That was an expensive bloody That's video. That's an expensive experiment. Yes, and, thank you, Matt Murray. Uh, <laughs> the, the pictures, spoiler alert, the pictures are bloody the same almost. Really? So does it really? This does it really be, matter? Oh, this should be explored. Does it really matter if you're yep. using a similar point and shoot to one another point and shoot? Does it really matter? That's a very helpful video for people. Who, yeah, I think that's helpful that to you know <laughs> put that in your point and shoot and smoke it. That's right. I, I think it's a good video for people because we get caught up in um, in what uh, you know, and, and it can be about status. It's kind of like. Um, you know, it's like with cars and things like that. It's like this car's the same as this car. It's just got a badge on it of uh, yeah, BMW I, or whatever. I mean, I don't really know anything about cars, I, but I, I don't think I don't know. There's a lot of I think snobbery is. This is probably another topic, but I think snobbery is more rife in the digital world. You know, like you mm, like the other day I was in a yeah. digital group and someone or oh, photography group and someone put. I'm having this problem with my Canon camera, and so but ah, that's the first problem. You're shooting with the Canon. You should be yeah. shooting. Yeah. Like, what, what? Yeah, there's what, a real what's rivalry. The point of that? That's idiotic. Yeah, with f-stoppers. Like, there's always like you Canon know. versus Nikon versus Sony versus Fujifilm. And, yeah. And why do you yeah. shoot APS-C? You may as well just shoot full frame. Full frame comes with better resolution, better pictures. Yeah. Like, who, just shoot what you want. Like. Yeah. Uh, so I th I feel in a way, I, I don't know. I, I feel like film snobbery isn't as big a thing. Like. I think it's because there's not digital. as much to kind of maybe not as much to argue about like because there's always new things with digital so it's like you know this new camera and this new camera and this new feature in this way of you know like there's mm. all these improvements all the time so maybe that's why but I was yeah. listening to a podcast the other day actually it's Jason Hunter um he has a podcast called two hour photo I think he's actually just stopped it because he's he can't keep up but he was saying that um he shoots digital and film and he yeah. shoots a lot of Fujifilm cameras and he said the Fujifilm community are the best in his experience yeah like they because they're really open and really experimental because they've got like the film like sims and recipes and stuff like that yeah. um so like they're kind of bridging the gap between like digital and film and they're not like purists so like maybe some of them do shoot a little bit of film as well as you know shooting fuji and he yeah. just said they're just really nice group of people from his experience and i mm. was like oh okay like i wonder if that's true so yeah. bit of food for thought there Cool. Cool. Okay. I, I actually follow him on Twitter. I just realized. So yeah. he's really nice. A really nice guy. Yeah. His his podcast is it's, it's not, a few of the episodes are a bit too like gear yeah, yeah. centric for me. Um. But we're supposed to do a podcast together soon, so I'll have to see if he's hmm. still, you know, because people do get like too busy, you know, yeah. in their personal lives to be able to be putting out all of this sort of content. So, um, we can't all be Matt Murray and Lucy Lumen, you know. Um, but. Yes, I think that that wraps up our analog not hour ever. I don't think it'll ever be an hour, but that's okay. Um, I hope everybody enjoyed listening and thank you so much for the listener questions and anybody who's watching, comment below, let us know what you thought, um, give us a DM, um, send us some topics if you think of any that you would like us to discuss on the next um, episode. And yeah, don't forget to check out all of what we, um, what we do and go over and give Matt some love on his amazing YouTube channel. Awesome. Thanks, All right, I'll see you next time, Matthew. See you next time.